Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, <clears throat> so I was thinking about Volantis these days. I'm, uh, and um, this isn't too helpful, but I'll, I'll blow this up for a second just uh, while we're while we're doing this. And um, the reason I've, I was thinking about Volantis is I don't know. I had I had this inspiration on Samwell too, and uh, for the fanfic and like. And I, and I want Sam to to be in some way taking place in Volantis. And so I was, I was thinking a lot about Volantis and which characters are in Volantis. You know, for instance, Lord Sunglass is in Volantis and and uh, uh, Oberyn, Lady Nim's mother, Oberyn's um, baby mama, you know, <clears throat> characters like this. And the the widow of the waterfront and such. And, you know, I started thinking about Volantis and, you know, the fans generally think that at some point there will be a battle for Volantis. Whether Danny will be there yet um, or if it'll happen before Danny gets there uh, is an issue or whether it'll happen after Danny gets there is, is up for debate. Um, there's the idea that Widow of the Waterfront is already kind of saying that there's a grassroots like movement ready to overthrow things in Volantis. Slaves are like 90% of the city or whatever. Um, so it could happen before Danny gets there or it could happen, you know, with Danny. But um, it's Volantis is kind of an interesting city with regards to geography. So it's split into two sides. Uh, there's a west side and an east side. And the west side is kind of the the foreigner uh, new new part of the city. It's filled with foreigners and sell swords and crime and and uh, not so uh, it, you know it's not considered as nice as the east part of the city. And so in history, uh, they've the in order to put down trouble going on in the west, like they've sent slave armies across the Long Bridge into the west to deal with it. And the, the bridge itself is incredibly strong. It's said to be able to support thousands of elephants and things like this. So, you know, we think of these huge armies being able to cross this, this bridge. And the river is supposed to be very choppy and hard to, hard to manage. And meanwhile, so the widow of the waterfront is on the west side. So if she's talking about sort of a rebellion movement or leading a rebellion movement, she would be on the west um, and then all the people in the east, they could send armies over, whatever. But then the, the temple of the Lord of Light is also in the east. So maybe they could cut things off and, and, and stuff like that and have some sort of, you know, uh, I don't know, pincer move taken from behind. Um, and but regardless, all of that, even if the slaves rebel and, you know, have some situation where the armies, you know, kind of head over to the to the bridge and then get taken from behind or whatever. Um, uh, you still have the deal with the old city, which has just this massive, massive wall, like 200 feet high, thick, thick wall that no one is possibly ever kind of getting through unless there's maybe a, a rebellion on the inside or something, which, um, you know, the... Volantis's old city doesn't necessarily make too much sense. They kind of say that no one is allowed from the outside, but how did they must have slaves working on the inside? So what do you have like slaves getting born and dying on the inside of the city or something? Or or what are they talking about? But you know, maybe whatever dragons could land on the ring and then just flame it in the in the middle and just create this huge, you know, firing, fiery pit. Who knows? Um, I looked in other things like Volantis is clearly based on New Orleans um, in that it's a city at the very end of the river. Um, the way that George describes it, it's sprawling. Uh, if you read Fever Dream where he has a chapter in New Orleans, it's, it's a very similar feel in how he describes like this kind of old, ancient, decaying city that sprawled out. Um, not to mention the fact that like Tyrion on his little boat going down the river is very, you know, river boating 
kind of stuff from 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 fever dream so you know i was thinking about like okay is there anything from history to think about with this with regards to um volantis and unfortunately there's not much there there in history we had uh, the Battle of New Orleans, which is a a battle that happened after the War of eighteen twelve was over, uh, where essentially the British try to take Andrew Jackson um, and fail. I mean, they, they they essentially try to try to do some crossings of the river, and and Andrew Jackson is just able to to you know he had the he he was just in a good position, and they weren't able to really do anything. Um, it's kind of a very significant, but not significant at all battle that everyone kind of argues about in history. Uh, American historians like love to talk about what a curious, curious case it is. But I can't think of anything where it would really play into it, it with regards to Volantis. You know, would somebody try to cross the river? What would they be trying to get in 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 the Battle of New Orleans situation? They were trying to cross the river to take control of some artillery to then use against um, Jackson, which they did do, but they were just late. And so they weren't able to really use it uh, in time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's one of these things where, OK, you know, maybe some horde could march on the demon road and get and try to break into these walls. But or some fleet could come up, but I don't know. It, it, what seems most likely to me is some sort of internal fight, some some sort of um, what the Widow of the Waterfront is talking about, a slave revolt of some sort where the West Bank is filled with, um, you know, rebels and they, they try to send forces over the bridge. And then at some point, the, the Lord of Light forces take them from behind or something. And that the slaves end up taking the whole city and the, the nobles are just kind of trapped inside this ring while while the um, hold up in there while the while the um, uh, slaves kind of have have everything have control of everything. And then maybe when Danny eventually, you know, arrives, she she lands her dragon on the ring or whatever and talks to the nobles inside. That's that's kind of what I what I, what I was th- envisioning it. But. You know, there's, there's, um, I don't know. I don't know how it'll all turn out with the fanfic because, because I have this, I have, I'm very, very excited about the Sam story. I'm, I, I think like the idea I have on where the Sam story is going is, is really, really quite positive. It's probably the, the, the one I'm most confident on. It's going to be, it's going to be great. And I, and I sort of have this idea that he is going to, that Sam is going to, um, get in the mind of a court fool inside the of of one of the the triarchs, maybe one of the triarchs that happens to be in the same family as as Lady Nim's mom, and that somehow you know he'll have a point of view on things on that. But then, like how that how that affects everything else uh, in the city, and with regards to the slave revolt, I haven't figured out, but. I don't know. I'll figure it out eventually. But that's essentially what we have this breakdown that there there seems like there's going to be some sort of battle on these two fronts. With the widow of the waterfront on one side and then and then the Lord of Light people also on the other side of the river and it's somehow causing trouble. There's just too many discussions of how important this bridge is and how heavy the bridge is and and things like that. I do wonder if like you could get a big army on the bridge and then destroy the bridge, but I don't know how, um, you know, without massive explosions, a, a bridge goes down. But anyway, that's just things that were on my mind about it. I'm sure some people will bring up Volantis stuff. Um, anyway, hope you all did your taxes. It's tax day tomorrow. Um, Let's see here. What we what what do we got here? Thoughts on the dropped King Bread plot line? <laughs> Will he return in the fanfic? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, so what Trip and Zombies is talking about is like during the bread riot in a clash of kings, they all yell 
for for um bread bread and Tyrion thinks like king bread rules like they, everybody's forgotten about king stannis and king renly and king bread rules king bread the real winner of the of the war of the five kings you know <laughs> but it'd be kind of funny if king bread comes back king bread more powerful than than anybody else people are like oh do you believe like john will sit the iron throne no king bread king bread will sit the iron throne in the end um wins has to be fast paced or at least a danny story i mean wins does like what is what is needed is for wins to be fast paced the the rest in order to to really close the plot um of a song of ice and fire you need to have a breakneck speed for both uh the winds of winter and a dream of spring it needs to just be fast fast and efficient and i'm talking faster than a storm of swords um because there's a lot of storm of swords which is people mucking around um the the stuff that gets like closed fast is is the you know the rob getting killed and 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 joffrey getting killed and sansa kill you know sansa plot and lysa getting killed and um and uh but there is a lot of just there is some downtime in storm i mean um the jamie and brienne story could be shorter if you wanted it aria's story could obviously be shorter if you wanted it john's story could be shorter if you wanted it um you know so there is but there's just the the the, all the plot elements that were introduced in a feast for crows and a dance with dragons and there's just so many all have to be resolved in a in a very very fast and efficient you know fashion so yeah i mean you you could just have danny you know going place to place just killing everybody with fire and just being like oh this is a complicated plot well it doesn't matter because they're all dead you know (laughs) kind of pull that kind of thing which i actually think is a little lazy i'd like to have you know some good uh some good um resolution to things rather than just you know plot lines where everyone's just killed um could east volantis burn to turn into glass candle so there are these there are some that believe that like there's something super special about these walls that are supposedly um harder than steel and diamond and uh I don't, you know, I'm not sure about that. Whatever these like, it's black oily stone kind of stuff on, on like what these, what these walls of, of, um, Volantis are like. Volantis was an outpost. It wasn't supposed to be a city. It was supposed to be an outpost for uh, Valyria. Um, and so whatever it was and whatever it was defending was against, and let's just assume that it's, you know, they want to, they want an outpost that can defend against, I don't know, dragons too. Um, there's, there's gotta be something, something special about those, about the, I mean, it just seems to be like some sort of hard plastic of some co- sort. Duraloy, Duraloy is the one that George uses in all his sci-fi. There's just, it's Duraloy. I don't know, but t- turn it into a glass candle. I wonder if there, you know, I wonder if there are more glass candles there. Um, what's going on inside that city? We can do anything we want with the, with, on the inside of the. Um, um, did Volantis already fall? No, no. I mean, Delant, Vol, Delant, Volantis didn't fall. Volantis had an election in which the Tiger faction won for the first time, and the Tiger faction was for war against Danny. Um, there, I and mean, it's true that there's a lot of tigers that are followers of the Lord of Light, um, and that gets into things on what that what that ship, you know, the ships. But this idea that like the slave soldiers who are tiger soldiers, who are slaves, who are Lord of Light followers, um, that that would somehow change the upper management 
upper governance of Volantis. No, like the upper governance of Volantis, they they don't even follow the Lord of the Light. They they follow like the gods of old Valyria and stuff, and and um, you know, they're 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 tigers, but they're it's it's you know it's different from from like the t- the tiger faction soldiers on the 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 Volantis ships, you know. So it it, it gets a little complicated, but um, no, it's it. It changed into just a, a war wanting uh, city, but they're not, they're certainly not for Danny. In fact, when Victorian makes it, when Victorian visits Volantis, the Tigers have taken over, and, and Victorian doesn't feel comfortable there because he feels that they're all very anti Danny and he's going to, to form an alliance. Um, Esos are the magical tropes, dragons, resurrection, Westeros are the sci-fi tropes, hive minds, animated dead, psionics, a song of sci-fi and magic. Uh, I'm not sure about that. So keep in mind that like the hive mind thing is definitely also in uh, Karth. I mean, the house of the house of the undying is a werewood. Like it's, it's so you know, obviously mirrored to the werewoods where you, where you have like the, you know, the dark ebony and, and the, and the, the, the trees that have the, that they find at the house of the undying and the hive mind that, that is the house of the undying. It's a, it's a bunch of hive minded warlocks who have a weird heart in the middle who are trying to like get Danny to join their hive mind, just like the werewoods are trying to get brand to join their hive mind so it's not like the esos doesn't have those same sort of elements um i'm, I'm just trying to think if they're um and not to mention like quaith is using a glass candle which seems very sci-fi-ish um you know as as some sort of like communication device telepathic communication device versus a you know versus magic i mean it's not that different from a crystal ball i get it but you know um and then i'm trying to think animated dead i mean the animated dead i mean you could also talk about the 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 stone manor kind of animated dead right um you know in the same sense that like you know how night of the living dead had zombies but then this it, in modern zombie flicks, they're all they're all like twenty eight days later, they're all virus zombies, you know. So it's like it's like having something that's a little too magical. So they try to make it into into a virus instead. I think in the original Night of the Living Dead, it was it was uh, some sort of comet came by. Was that it? And keep in mind that Night of the Living Dead, all dead come return not just like people that are that are based on um let's see it's it's a listen to the radio and yeah they say that it's a oh i'm sorry it's radiation from radiation from a space probe that returned from venus <laughs> radiation from a space probe that returned from venus of course that that animates reanimates all dead on earth fair 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 enough fair enough um so i don't know kind of bits and bits here and there um Bravos are, bravos are thugs hired by nobles in early modern Italy to keep commoners in line. Really? I didn't know this. Bravos, Italy. <clears throat> um. Oh, uh, I see. The bravi. Bravo in the singular a species of coarse soldiery and high or hired assassins and pr- employed by the rural lordlings 
or dons of northern Italy in the 16th and 17th century to protect their interests. The word derives probably from the Latin pravus, bad, wicked, evil, by the Spanish bravo, violent, savage, impulsive. Their fame and their reputation are frightening and domineering bullies rests in part of their striking presence in Alessandro Marzoi's historical novel, The Betrothed, uh, which became uh, one of the best-known Italian works of the 19th century. They are not, however, a fictional invention. His research into local history enabled Mansoli to ascertain from dates and publication. Uh, okay. Hmm. Okay. I had never hired assassins in northern Italy, um, especially Venice, in the uh, um, in the sixteenth and seventeenth centuries. All right, thank you, thank you. Now I know. Now I know. Um. <clears throat> could the Asha pregnancy have an effect on further in the story? Might it appear in the fanfic? So I've definitely thought about what the Asha pregnancy, because I believe the Asha pregnancy needs to play a part. You don't have, you don't, I mean, it's George, like you don't have pages and pages of a, of a, uh, of an intense sex scene between, you know, with with uh, Carl the maid, without having that come back, right? Does he? Doesn't doesn't Carl the? I mean, Carl the maid semen has to come back in the plot at some point, right? Like that's Chekhov's Chekhov's Carl the maid semen. Um, I mean, I guess you know Ned's Ned's semen didn't go anywhere in in, in Catalan too. I mean, besides the floor, but um. So, okay, so what can Asha do? So Asha is pregnant. And the thing is, her being pregnant with Carl the maid's baby is meaningless. No one's going to care about Carl the maid's bastard, okay? No one. Um, and so <clears throat> the idea is who can Asha lie to and convinced that she is carrying a more important baby. And so I always say like, okay, who the, I think the most obvious answer is, is Stannis. Like I'm carrying Stannis's baby. Like imagine she, like Asha gets into some situation where, you know, say she makes it to the wall and you know, it's being, it's, it's being ruled by, by, you know, King's men or Queen's men. And they're like, why should we not kill you? And she says, well, because I'm carrying, I'm carrying Stannis' baby. And then all of a sudden, you know, Melisandre is like, oh my gosh, we've got King's blood. Or other people are like, oh my gosh, maybe we have an heir. Um, even though he's a bastard, it, well, it's better than nothing. Like, I think it'd be really interesting if Asha is telling people that she's carrying Stannis' baby. And everybody's like, what? How? What? You know? And you know, timing wise, it would all look, it would all work out. Um, you know, considering that like she's impregnated the same very day as, as Stannis attacks Deepwood Mott. Like, like, you know, that's the best idea I have. Obviously this is, this is, you know, stuff that's going to be way in the future, but I think it's something was gardened there. I mean, I don't know if, if Asha would be, doing that and you know if that was george's plan but like he somehow thinks that like this this bastard's going to be useful in some respect so um but uh i don't know anybody have got any better better ideas on on i'm gonna see what anybody got better ideas on on uh um asha has patch faces semen <laughs> oh, he has Patchface sneak the semen from Stannis while he sleeps to usurp the throne. So Patchface would go in. You're saying Patchface is going to go in, 
you know, get the semen. Like, like Stannis is asleep and Patchface goes in and he's not woken up by the bells or anything. He gets the load, goes, ah, I don't know. Um, um, Massey is the fake dad, not there to defend or Tycho. But right, but even if it's Justin Massey's baby... I mean, Justin, like, obviously, just obviously we know that Asha doesn't sleep with Justin Massey and Massey's leaving, but she could tell everyone that she's bro she's pregnant with Justin Massey's baby, but why would anyone care? Why would anyone care about Justin Massey's baby? That's what I'm saying. Like, Justin Massey's not important enough for his, for his semen to be useful. That's why I think, like, I'm just thinking of like who is important that she could conceivably like say is the father and have people be like, Oh crap. Like, you know? Um, so I, I just don't, I don't know. Uh, like obviously Justin Massey is like the most believable because she was walking around with Justin Massey and people don't know what they were up to, you know? Um, you know that one she could that one's believable the problem with the stannis one is you're everyone's going to be like well when when did she have a chance and, you know it, she would need to leave behind all the people at the battle because they know that she didn't sleep with 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 stannis like she had like 10 minutes with him but she was with like a whole group of people um including you know you know theon was in there and you know the 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 Richard Horp and stuff like that. Like they all know that it didn't happen. So like she could conceivably lie and say Justin Massey, or she could tell somebody that it was Stannis because they were on the road for two months, maybe or something. I don't know. Stannis snuck in at some point, you know, she could lie or if she makes it to the wall without a bunch of people and she tells people that it was Stannis, like they don't know. I don't know. I can't think of anybody else that would like, who cares about Justin Massey's baby though? You know, it's just got to be – Stannis is the best one I can come up with as being something interesting. Um, You brought up Lazy – never. F you brought up Lazy, never felt good about Janice Slint's quick fate at the wall. We could have had more story from him. Uh, I, I, I fully agree. Um, I mean, Justin Mass – I mean, Janice Slint, he plays a role um, as like – the guy that everybody's going to vote for immediately because he arrived at the wall and everybody's going to be like, well, he ruled the, he, he ran the gold cloaks. He must be good for us, which I don't even know if the, the people in the night's watch would really care about that. But, um, you know, especially considering it's like lifetime appointments, you'd think they'd all want to get to know the guy better and things like that. And then he's, 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 he's beheaded really quick. Um, and uh, I at first I, I used to say that like, oh, John didn't know about Janice's like role, but apparently he did. Somebody sent me the quote and I was like, oh, how did John find that out? I did you know, like, but um, I had so so I went from like being like, oh, like it was it was an accidental ironic thing that he beheaded Janice Slint for Janice Slint's role in beheading Ned, his father. But. Now and now I'm just puzzled. I'm like, how did John find out? How did that? How did that happen? Uh, did Janice Slint mention something? Did somebody else mention something? How did that? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think it would be way cooler to have Janice Slint causing trouble and being being this little, you know, um, little imp later on. But I guess we have Alistair. Thor I mean, Alistair Thorne is still alive, so. We, we, we can do it through him, but it would just be, you know, it feels like, it feels like Slint should have been nice. Um, I thought there could have been more. I mean, instead we got, you know, a chapter about John going north of the wall and finding a, <clears throat> a giant. Um, and then we had a chapter about him going to the, the, the wildlings and having them have a riot over some apples. And um, we had a chapter about, him fighting uh, Mance Raider 
uh, dressed as as Rattleshirt, and we had a chapter about John in very much very detail talking about all the exact amount of food they have at the wall. So those were all you know. That's what we got instead. That's what we got instead with John. Um, traveling for work tomorrow, was interested in checking out some of George R. R. Martin's other work on the flight. Maybe dying of the light. Any recommendations? Yeah, um, I, I would recommend Dying of the Light's really great. Uh, I'd recommend The Glass Flower. I would recommend Song for Leah. I would recommend Sand Kings. Uh, those are those are kind of the. I would say that's the cream of the crop. Uh, some other good ones. Um, when morning comes, mist falls. Really good. I like um, this Tower of Ashes. Uh, um, oh, and Meat House Man. Fucking. Oh my God. You got to read Meat House Man. Meat House Man is probably one of the one of the. If you, but yeah, I think if you read those ones, you're all good. There, there, there's some that I would say that are just not worth it. Like, I don't think, I don't think skin trade is that good. I don't think Armageddon rag is necessarily worth a read. Um, you know, a fun one. I mean, fever dream is pretty, pretty fun. If you want, if you want something long, if you want a lot of, but that's the thing is a lot of George's story is pretty short. And so when I, you know, say these short stories, but, um, I think my, my favorite might be glass flower, but you should definitely read a song for Leah and sand Kings. And, um, um, you know, some of them are more useful if you want to know about ice and fire and some of them are just good in and, in and of themselves as good, you know? So, and seven times never kill man. Uh, favorite zombie movie or TV show. Um, You know, I really, I think the, the remake of Dawn of the Dead is really, really good. Um, the the Zack Snyder one. I think the Zack Snyder Dawn, Dawn of the Dead is is quite a good movie. I don't think it gets more like fun than that. I think 28 Days Later is also a really good movie. Um, though it's not much of a zombie movie, is it? You know, 28 Days Later is just like, this this movie about a bunch of military guys or whatever. It's, I mean, it's a great it's a great movie. I just don't necessarily think it's like actually a zombie movie. But isn't I mean? I guess all the zombie movies aren't really zombie movies. They're about hu- what humans do to each other. Um, but I think I I, re- I really like Zack, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Um, and that's the thing is I don't even like many of Zack Snyder's stuff. But I think he, uh, but um. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones that, that I actually, I think 28 days later is really good. Um, I don't, I think 28 weeks later is horrible. Um, there are some that are horrible that I still think are interesting. Like I still think land of the dead is interesting, even though it's not a very good movie. I still, I like the, 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 uh, the idea of it. Oh, Shaun of the dead is really good. Um, I'm trying to think anything uh the best I'm trying to think of all the zombie movies I've seen I saw Fido Fido is not very I mean Fido is a very interesting concept um especially considering it's very much like Fallout but when did Fido come out um 2006 and when did Fallout come out as a video game Fallout came out in 2001, right? So Fallout predated. Oh, Fallout's way before. Okay, okay. So Fallout, yeah, Fido is more copying Fallout than it is uh, the other way around. But I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I thought the first season of Walking Dead was very good. Though I'm not. Uh, um, I think it goes goes downhill fast. <laughs> How clear do you think George will make time traveling Bran 
Will we directly see or speak with past Bran or could it all be hidden in the background? That's an interesting question. I'd always thought that as much as George likes to hide things, I'd always imagined time traveling Bran being rather explicit that once it's eventually revealed that there's another, that Bran's been in this loop. Um, you know, like, huh. I hadn't considered, I actually hadn't considered um, having that element be be ambiguous because it's just like because it's such a it's such a like um time travel is already complicated like you know it's dizzying Com time travel as much as we make movies about time traveling it's it's a dizzying thought to think about with the paradoxes and how how the world functions and things like that um and so if you're ambiguous about the time travel it makes it even even harder to wrap your mind around. Like when we've had these discussions about time traveling Bran and like the original timeline and what he's allowed to change and how that would affect him in, in, a, in a time loops and things like this. And, or is it multi many worlds and things like this? You get a headache talking about it after like five minutes. Cause you're just like, Oh, what's going on. But if it's like abstract too, Oh, that would almost be too much. So I'm kind of say, I kind of think that, that not as that it will be explicit just because it's very difficult to talk about time travel anyway by itself, you know. Um, I find it hard to believe many more dragon riders weren't shot from their saddle in flight. Way less believable than the lucky um, arbalest shot in Dorne. Well. I mean, you are right that if you're talking about hitting a dragon and bringing down a dragon, you should be going for the rider. Um, it's much, he's a much bigger target than an eye, a gullet, anything like that. That said, Bows and arrows, they don't really go that far. Like what's the what's the 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 max range on a on a on a longbow? Like 300 meters, like at most. Um yeah. But an effective range of 300 meters. Okay. Like that's like the limit of a longbow. And then okay, you could say, okay, maybe you can go beyond that with like a lack of effectiveness. Like you're just shooting it and hoping that you can, <clears throat> you can't aim, but at least maybe you can get the distance. Um, <clears throat> George dealt with this problem with um, the wall. So the wall is 700 feet high. Um, and so, you know, the idea that someone could shoot up against gravity, you know, and have an arrow make it to the top of the wall is just ridiculous. Okay. It's just ridiculous. I understand that even straight, like maybe you could get it to go a thousand feet, but that's like, you know, to go straight up at, at no, it's, it's totally not making it. And so he then had to explain later that, oh, actually it was the wind like bringing, bringing the arrows up and that, that it was, you know, he understood that no one could possibly shoot to the top of the wall, but it was the wind that was bringing arrows up. And you're like, Oh really? You know, <laughs> like, cause there was definitely discussions of like the scarecrows on the wall and them getting hit, you know? So, you know, obviously George is horrible with distances and things like that. Now I'm trying to think of like, a scorpion um, shooting distance. You know, how, how far could that be? Um, again, an effectiveness. 
of what, 250 meters? Some less? So a scorpion actually like maybe 400 yards possible, being optimistic, 300 yards. So you're talking like something that <clears throat> is has the same distance, if not less than a longbow. Okay, so why would a dragon <laughs> ever fly low enough to actually be hit by a scorpion or a longbow? Like it would just be, what, like why would you bother? Um, so, but yes, I mean, I agree, but... You could say, okay, well, you know, the dragon's fire doesn't, you know, he wants that dragon fire to be effective. So he has to come down and use and, and breathe the fire from, from a, uh, from a low distance or something, you know, you have to have that like, okay, dragon fire doesn't actually have a very long distance. It's actually much shorter than a, um, a bow, <clears throat> which, which reminds me when I was young. There was a, uh, a Dungeons and Dragons magazine that I used to read called Dragon. And there was this great article that I remember, and it was so funny because it explained that a kobold with a longbow is actually much more powerful than than a wizard, like a, like a, tw a 25th level wizard or whatever, because the spell range... The maximum spell range of a wizard was way less than a kobold with a, with a with a longbow, <laughs> and so this could, you know, <clears throat> which is what I loved about Dragon Magazine is they look at the rules of Dungeons and Dragons and be like, these things like don't match up. So I suppose you need, you know you need to have the dragon want to come down to use the fire and then just have everybody shooting arrows, and. It seems a lot easier to get 50 dudes shooting arrows than a scorpion. A scorpion seems really difficult to load, to build. You could just get a bunch of dudes with arrows and just like just massive shots, just raining arrows and hoping like something hits a joint on the rider and has them. And, you know, that seems like the best way to go for honestly, it's just so many, so many archers with longbows just raining arrows at a at a at a dragon rider and hoping something something uh, uh you know hits him punctures punctures a joint in the armor but that's that's my guess but i mean the scorpion thing that's ridiculous <clears throat> scorpion's not hitting shit <laughs> okay we did that um if the moon is needed for uh, glass candles to relay info, enter dreams, then how did Quaith enter Danny's dreams when she was in the cabin of the ship? Um. Hmm. This is this is the um, the night she she has sex with Erie uh, that you're referring to, yeah. I mean, it's a good question. It's a good question. I uh cuz a lot of times when you're when you have these scenes where people's heads are getting messed with, like like Ned has moonlight on him, Hoster Tully has moonlight on him. Um how, you know, how is it affecting how is it getting to Danny? Does she have a window in her cabin? Or anything like that? Could something go through a uh, a board? Is any light? Can any light seep through? Let me let me let me see here. Um, <clears throat> Jorah's kiss had woken something in her. She something's uh, lying in bed in her narrow bunk. She found herself wondering how it would have the man squeezed beside her in place of her handmaid. Um, his face remain, remained a shifting shadow. See, it seems pretty darkness. It says Danny knew her face was flushed, but the darkness, she couldn't tell. 
Um, hmm. Maybe between, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe like a tiny little bit of moonlight went through a board or something. Right. I mean, I'm just getting, you know, this is just on the, the, the weird dreams that she had on, on, um, of, over the shifting person, you know, that she's, she has sexual dreams about later. She's, you know, when she's in the, when, Quaith actually visits her. All right, does Quaith even? Quaith doesn't um, visit her in a storm of. Oh wait, no, she does. She visits her. She does have a dream in in a storm of swords too. Let me see here. There's got to be something. I got, I got, I went on this long discussion of 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 the sex thing, but who's there in the darkness? She peered into the darkness. She thought she could see a shadow, the faintest outline of a shape. So there's some light. Okay. So. <clears throat> It's dark, but not completely dark in her cabin because she thinks she sees the shape, the faintest outline of a shape. So some light is seeping in to her, to her cabin. Um, so I feel like there has to be like a window or... A board is a jar that allows in some sort of light. Otherwise, she wouldn't be able to see a sh uh, like the shape of anything. She woke suddenly in the darkness, still flushed with her tr with triumph. Right? Is that the triumph from her? Hmm. Anyway, that's just my, my headcanon explanation. <laughs> Obviously, like, it probably just doesn't make any sense. And, and, you know. <clears throat> but that's what I'm going with. That it was, that it was, it was really, really dark in her cabin, but it wasn't completely dark, which means light was seeping in from somewhere. That's, that's what I'm going with. Or that. You know, it can it can penetrate through some boards and stuff. It's just it's clearer when when you don't have a, something block like like it like a radio signal. That's the other explanation. <coughs> you speak of time traveling brand as if it were canon. Is it? Um, I mean, nothing's canon, right? You know, George can change his mind on everything and everything's everything's ambiguous to some degree. But I would say that. Um, <clears throat> I'd say there's a lot of evidence of time traveling brand. Like one is just we have a time travel evidence. We have a time travel um, piece in the show. So we know that time travel happens in the show. And then we kind of know that um, uh, there are elements of time travel in Ice and Fire in A Dance with Dragons when Bran goes back in time and, and you know, tries to talk to his dad. And so we kind of have this element that, yes, the time travel will be in the show somehow. I mean, in the book somehow. So time travel exists as a concept. Now, is it time traveling Bran? doing things well we kind of know that like at least in the show brand went back and screwed up hodor um and then there are other elements like that are that are not really explainable without time traveling brand like john in the frost fangs finding that tree 
that's Bran. And the things the things that Bran talked about as that tree saying, oh, like, I like it. I'm not scared of the dark. I'm here to open your eye and things like that. You know, like, yeah, you could say, oh, that was that was Bran in the crypts of Winterfell. But it doesn't really make sense for him to be the, the same Bran from the crypts of Winterfell. So, no, it's not 100 percent. But I would say the time traveling Bran, just based on the elements of the show and things like that, that time traveling Bran is a thing. I think there's some debate on whether or not time traveling Bran is the three eyed crow. So, I mean, I would say time traveling Bran is a thing. I'd say that's pretty close to being canon. You know, we had time traveling in the show. We have, we have the hints, very strong hint that time traveling is happening in the book too. Um, I think time traveling Bran is a, is definitely a thing, but it's, whether time traveling Bran is the three eyed crow and like a lot of the visions that Bran received as the three eyed crow is that time traveling Bran is what's up for debate. Um, but the fact that there is a, that, that Bran is going to be time traveling in the story, that's 99%. That's 99% that Bran's going to be time traveling in the story. I mean, it's just, you know, what, why have it in the show and then have that chapter and then have and brand three in a dance with dragons where, you know, he goes back in time and he like talks, he talks to his dad and dad's like, Bran, you know, and then blood Raven's like, no, you can't time travel and affect anything. Well, what the hell of the point of that scene was then, you know, um, Thoughts on Iran versus Israel? Well, <clears throat> generally speaking, we're in a pretty bad situation here with, with Iran and Israel. Um, Iran got struck by, by Israel, and so it needed to show some sort of retaliation at some point, you know? It doesn't, it probably, Iran probably doesn't want to go to war, but at the same time, like when it gets, when it, when you get struck, you have to, you have to retaliate in some respect in order to save face and, and deter people from attacking you. So Iran had to do that. Now, why is Netanyahu doing like attacking Iran? Because he's, he's lost the freaking war. He's lost the war with God, like in Gaza. He's lost it. It is his PR war is disastrous. He is deeply, deeply unpopular. He is, he's got nothing going for him. Um, he, uh, the war, like the war, the war in Gaza has, has been bungled as, as badly as any war could possibly have been bungled. <laughs> like Hamas won, has won that war 100%. Like the, the Israel has like, Hamas has gotten everything they wanted, right? Like Hamas um, screwed up the 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 diplomacy between Saudi and and Israel. It got people thinking about the Palestinian issue again, and and Israel by by going in and just being not being careful and killing so many civilians and just in really embarrassing situations. Like, oh my gosh, the Jose Andres thing. Oh. Okay, for, by the way, for those that don't know, Jose Andres is a very popular um, Spanish-American chef in America. And he owns a number of very famous restaurants here in the D.C. area. Okay, And he also runs a humanitarian aid organization <laughs> Where, where he, you know, brings food to refugees. And people love Jose Andres and they love Jose Andres' restaurants. Okay. And you, and you go and you kill, you kill his dudes. And he goes on TV and tells everybody, no, they were targeted. Like, oh my God, you're just, whoever did that is just they're like so dumb. They're so dumb. So dumb. Like, uh, 
So the PR, like Netanyahu is losing this PR war badly, badly, badly. And so I think he needed something. And so he's, he's attacking Iran and trying to escalate things in order to have a rally around the flag kind of situation for him because it's all he's got. I don't think, hopefully, this is like fingers crossed. Iran will be like, okay, we had our retaliation. Yay, yay, yay. Now, please, let's not have war anymore. That's my, that's like the fingers crossed situation. Um, that like, okay, you attacked us. You killed a bunch of, uh, we did our retaliation. Now let, let's be done, you know? And let's hope that like Netanyahu doesn't push it any further and we don't escalate this, this war um, anymore. Cause it's, it's asinine and stupid. Oh my gosh. But man, this is, this is, Israel needs to get rid of, needs to get rid of Netanyahu immediately. They need to get rid of Netanyahu immediately. Um, he is just bad news. Everything he, everything he touches turns to shit. Everything he does. He's the most incompetent idiot. He's making Israel look so bad, so bad. He is burning through allies. Like, you know, the U.S. is on the fence right now. Like, even the U.S. Oh, gosh. Oof. Um, yeah. Oof. It's hope. Let's just hope it de-escalates and we don't have more people dying because it's, uh, it's, not, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. Um, I know you've spoken a little bit about Christian nationalism. And as a Christian, I disagree with the Republican Party. Also, thoughts on Project 2025. Project 2025 is pretty scary. Um, yeah, you know, you know the, the thing about Christianity is that it's incredibly broad and uh, it can be interpreted, interpreted in so many, so many different ways. So obviously there's um, hundreds of thousands of, of very liberal Christians in America. And, you know, and then there's hundreds of thousands of very conservative Christians in America. Um, my, my great grandfather was um, a Christian missionary and he, uh, in his youth decided to go to India, modern day Pakistan, um, and teach at a school. And he wrote a autobiography, not, not, not a full thing. He, he never finished it, but he, it covered his period of going to India and he went to India to teach at the school. And, uh, while he was there, plague came through the town and killed three quarters of his students. And it was so traumatic to my great grandfather that he decided to <clears throat> um, dedicate his life to like medicine and, and helping people after that. And so he, he, he dedicated a number of years to trying to, trying to eradicate hookworm and um, lived in Ceylon for a while and Siam for a while and Java for a while, trying to el eliminate hookworm. And the thing is, is when I read his autobiography, it's, <clears throat> it's straight up like, as the Christian thing to do, I knew I needed to help people. The whole thing is like very, very devout. Like as a, I'm, it was like, I'm very thankful for my Christian upbringing. And I want, you know, I wanted to use, I, and as part of this Christian upbringing, I needed to like help the world, you know? And so, you know, I certainly understand that like, <laughs> that like, um, there, there are liberal Christians out there. There are, you know, caring Christians out there that, um, that really want to help, to help the world. You know, I think organizations like um, Catholic Relief Charities is, is fantastic. I, you know, I think it's an incredible organization that does a lot of great work um, in the world. Um, there's, but there's, there's, you know, this weird segment in America and in, in a sense, it's, it's, it's the same with um, in the Middle East as well, like people people trying to steal the word Christian all for themselves, or even American. You know, and it's in America, it's the same people. Like the, they they dress themselves in the flag, and they're like, "I'm the only I'm the only American. The rest of you aren't real Americans." You know, same thing. Like I'm the people that are like, "I'm the only Christians. The rest of you aren't real Christians." You know. 
Um, Middle East is the same. Like they'll call themselves the Muslim Brotherhood, and 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 the rest of the Muslims are get really angry because they're like, "You're calling yourself the Muslim Brotherhood as if like I'm not a Muslim if I don't agree with you, but I don't agree with you, but I'm still a Muslim," you know? Like, and so they like they get really angry when they use names like that. Like, obviously, the Muslim Brotherhood purposely named themselves something general like that so that they would get recruits, so that somebody, some idiot is sitting around going, how can I be a, be a good Muslim? Oh, I'll join the Muslim Brotherhood. You know, you're like, uh, you know, but then other Muslims are like, oh, you're so arrogant that you think that like you have, that the only way to be a Muslim is to join your organization. Like, who the hell are you? So, you know, we run into these same problems with, um, with Christianity in America. Um, but yeah, Project 2025 is super scary. It's, um, you can see some of the things that they, uh, um, so one of the big jokes are that about Trump on his first election was that he didn't actually think he was going to win. So he had put no time in putting together a transition team and no one else had put any time into, into thinking about Trump's transition. And so in many ways, like, you know, Trump wasn't able to even attempt to do a lot of things because they were just, they were, they were hapless. Um, and I knew some people, I knew people that worked at GSA um, at the time and they were like, yeah, it's ridiculous. They haven't called us. You know, like where because GSA was responsible for the the uh, a lot of logistics of the transition. It's a general services administration. It's a, a branch of of the U.S. government. Um. So let's see. So the project. Oh man. I'm I'm looking at the um. The policy agenda. Of. So they have this, this project 2025 is about trying to, to have a really fast uh, transition and then start, you know, pushing in policy as fast as possible. And um, it's, uh, let's see. Some of it's very general. I'll, I'll bring this up. Hold on a second. <sighs> so this is what we're talking about, the mandate for leadership. The... Um, the conservative promise project 2025 and it's pretty freaking scary um let's see like which 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 is going to be the the weirdest thing let's see what what do they say about the environmental let's go to the environmental section 417 what do they believe about the environment. I mean, this is something that you should be like. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to. Going to transition away from politically disfavored industries and technologies that the Biden administration and then the EPA has been a breeding ground for the expansion of federal government's influence and control over the economy. I'm trying to think like what are they going to say here? They want state lead, they want they want the essentially the EPA to go away, have state leadership. And uh, 
a reorg of some sort. And then um, I'm trying to think of like, like, here we go. Remove the greenhouse gas reporting program for any source category that is not being currently regulated. Weird. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's, I mean, it's, the whole thing is just like horrible. But I mean, I don't know. I don't necessarily think that like Trump would would follow it. Um, I mean, he might have his own crazy projects to try to make money himself. So, I mean, maybe he would if he thinks these are these are these would be allies to like keep him in keep keep him in power. Um, I'm trying to think. I think they. You know, then you say like, <laughs> where? Look at this. Words like gender equality, gender equity, would be would be. Are 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 are, are terms used to to uh, to take uh, take away Americans' First Amendment rights? Um, weird. Oh gosh. Pornography today is in the omnipresent propagation of transgender ideology and what? Man. This is this is I mean I don't want to spend too much time on it but it's just it's it's insanity like this has clearly been written by a really weird person. Um, that's just, uh, so it's, it's kind of crazy. Look at this. They're claiming that bureaucrats at the state department infused U S foreign aid programs with woke extremism and intersexual intersectionality and abortion. Like just really just weird stuff. You're like, what? Anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but it's it's crazy loony stuff. Like, um, so anyway, hopefully it will it will never it will never uh, see the light of day. Um, any Glovers capable? <laughs> Massey's one true king. The no, the, the thing about the Glovers, we're we're back on Asha and who who could impregnate who could be said to impregnate her. No, so the thing about Lady Lady Glover, um, her children and the others um, were brought to um, the Iron Isles, and so I imagine they're brought to the Iron Isles like a, a you know a month or two before Stannis, before she has sex with with Carla Maid. So I mean, not that she couldn't maybe you know bend the rules or talk about things but i don't think there's any glovers there that she could have sex with to impregnate her because they're all on uh, they're all hostages on harlaw um except for you know obviously lady glover is there but she can't impregnate asha so and you know i'm trying to think of like the like the the because they have the bastard who's the hornwood bastard but he's not he, he should be off too so i don't think there would be any reason I can't also understand. I can't also think like why people would be so, you know, fixated on, on Hornwood lands at this point in the story. Like it's, it seems like we're beyond the Hornwood dispute. Um, so I can't think of anything with the Glovers. Um, like I can say the only, the only person I can think that would be interesting to lie about would be um, Stannis, you know, um, like even if she claims like oh it's a car stark or something it's it's just like well how is that really going to play a role we, we we've got we've got very little time left in the story 
Um, <clears throat> Shouldn't Varys and Littlefinger have sources at the wall? Feels like these guys would have someone there. It's a pri it's a prison full of former nobles. <clears throat> One would think. Um, I mean, I believe that that Yorin is a Varys plant, but Yorin is traveling around the is traveling around the country. He's not necessarily at the wall. Um, but yeah, so what, back when I did my Night's Watch series, I originally th thought it was going to be like a factions, um, video because I was able to take other parts of the, of the, of Westeros and you can kind of figure out factions pretty well in that you can look at the north and be like well which you know which people did they look like they could support over time we can do that with the iron islands you can do it with the riverlands you can um you can do you can do it with dorn you can fit you know you can do different things and, and break it down various ways but when i looked at the the night's watch it turns out there was very few knights to actually to actually um talk about very few houses very few nobles to actually talk about and um and so in the end, that's not what the, the series was, you know, and I, I did other things with it, but you know, you can, you can count, I don't know if one hand, but it's very, very, very low on the number of people that, that have, that were in the night's watch that, you know, you've got Dolorous Ed, you've got Mormont, you got Thorn, you got Marsh, you got also Yorick, um, Smallwood. You know, but and and you, you you try to piece together like and they're and they're like small minor houses that like don't necessarily like Bowen Marsh like yeah he's he's a northerner or maybe he's you know Riverlands but Mar House Marsh is so small that you don't think about it right you know or same with you know all Tolette House Tolette like you don't think about them they're they're not significant so um. So I couldn't figure out any factions, but yeah, should Varys and Littlefinger have sources at the wall? They should, or at least, especially Varys. But um, I don't know if they think that, uh, I don't know if we necessarily even, we don't hear about them coming out with any, any information from there. So Old Town is probably more, uh, more focused on. Um, <clears throat> oh, speaking of Zach, Zach Snyder's Sucker Punch is one of those 2010 movies Hollywood would not make today. Hmm. <sighs> Sucker Punch, I mean... I'm trying to think because there's aspects of sucker sucker punch where I'd be like, oh no, it's totally something you'd you'd make today. Um, but I don't know other aspects, maybe not. Sucker punch for for those that have, haven't seen it, it's it's a it's a story about some some girls that that um, they, they, it's it's kind of a weird. It's like it's a it's a kind of a, an, an insane asylum, but in fact they're taking the girls and and uh, turning it into like a like a brothel show kind of location, and so all the girls are actually like trafficked, and so to deal with their trauma, they have like hallucinations about uh, liberation or, or winning battles, and so the and so the little cutscenes where they have the hallucinations are actually pretty cool. The rest of the movie is dreadfully boring. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe, I don't know. Dep they, they would make it differently. I, I, I suppose. Um, I mean, cause it's, it's a weird kind of, kind of situation where it's, it's, you have these characters that are being exploited and yet the viewer is also supposed to be titillated by that same exploitation, which I don't know. It sounds like 
most i don't know it sounds like that sounds like like regular fox news or whatever or like to catch a predator you know like on the one hand like every time fox news is like uh, like like oh a teacher in texas was 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 uh caught you know molesting their students and you're the, the the people viewing are supposed to be like oh that's so horrible but at the same time they're getting excited because it's about like teachers having sex with minors and so they're they're on the one hand like getting off on the very thing that they're criticizing right um it's 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 weird and so sucker punch is kind of that right that it's 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 utilizing and getting you know you're getting off on the same thing that it's criticizing oh it's kind of weird uh maybe it wouldn't get made today it's definitely pro it's definitely a problematic movie <laughs> Um, oh, would you ever think about writing something outside the Winds of Winter context, a side story? I was thinking about the type of thing set on the white knife titled The North Remembers Thoughts. Um, it's just time, time kind of thing. Like I have so little time these days and it's like, I'd like to, to get certain things. I have certain projects that I want to get done. That I don't want to, um, but, um, somebody did send me a, a short story. They, somebody wrote the she wolves of Winterfell, um, and sent it to me, but you know, I haven't really had the time to, to go and review it or any, anything like that. It's just like the kind of thing, like what's on the top of the, of the agenda and what I need to get done. You know, like, you know, I've got, I've got, you know, the fanfic for the winds of winter, my own, my own work, you know, um, the videos I put out, whether, you know, whether it be, um, a random theory video or, or, uh, talking with car, shooting the shit with Carmine or, um, going over a game of Thrones or, or over analyzing house of the dragon. There, you know, there's a lot of these things that like, you know, I only have so many, so much time. I mean, I also have a full-time job and a family. <laughs> it's like very, very, very difficult when people, when, when it's like, oh, would you consider doing this? And it's like, well, that's something has to get cut. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, there's only so much time that exists in, in, in Preston Jacob's life. You know, it's, it's hard. It's very, very hard. Um, there is, there is, I don't have like just hours to kill like ever. Um, if Ari's put on a show for Blood Raven via the White Raven when he killed Kevin and Littlefinger used Dantos to do the same, where do the children of the forest fit into their plans? Um... <clears throat> this is an interesting idea. So a lot of people talk about um, Varys, like, is Varys being 100% honest when he talks to Kevin? And, you you know, we, we assume that he is being 100% honest when he talks to Kevin. Um, and, you know, to most people. Um, but then there are, there are others that are like, well, wait a minute. Like, there there is another audience. At, at this murder and that is the white raven or whatever you could say glass candles or, or or whatever um and so it could be that varis is trying to fool watchers um by by saying and doing various things uh i don't believe this i think varis was 100 percent honest i don't think he was thinking about any anything else um but if you were assuming that, then it would be like Varys is is um, you know understands that Blood Raven is a threat to bringing about the Black Fires, you know, and he's put it, he's pushing forward the the like if we think of the story as another Black Fire rebellion that Aegon Aegon the Sixth is a Black Fire and the Varys is is trying to you know uh, have Black Fires take over and that Blood Raven 
is the biggest anti-Black Fire person, and they kind of know that he still is alive, and they want to fool him, you know, um, then then that would be in there. But then, like, where do the children of the forest play in it? It's hard to make sense of it at that point if you're throwing in the children of the forest. Like, once the children of the forest are in there, you think you're going kind of going on a level above something as petty as Black Fire rebellions that we're we're thinking about larger issues like the others, right? Or um, with the children of the forest. So like we did, you know, did little figure when he killed Dantos, you know, they being watched by the moon and that kind of thing. So um, I think it's a bit much to think that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I made the theory that, that, uh, that the faceless men are trying to take out blood Raven. Um, Hmm. Varys is actually he wants that white raven to uh <clears throat> that he thinks that white raven is is skin changed by blood raven watching them the the uh the whole time. What would be the what would be the function of that? I mean to fool blood oh okay, okay, okay. Now I'm getting it. Okay. So, assuming, and this is a big assumption, assuming Varys is secretly a Blackfire and Aegon is secretly a Blackfire, it, 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 it sticks with people. It's a little weird that Varys honestly tells Kevin that Aegon is trueborn or implies the it. Because he's like, I think he says... Aegon is real or something? What is the actual... Um, Aegon is here? I forgot what he, what he actually says here. Um... He says, "I have to bring up bring up the electronic copy. It's easier than than doing the search. I'm sorry." It's an interesting question. Now that I'm thinking, I mean, this is also very um, very kind of. I understand this is like in t- you know very tinfoil land, but. It's fun nonetheless. Because, I, you know, there are a lot of people that, that argue about this, um, about this aspect of, of uh, he says, <clears throat> so, so the, 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 the argument I've heard from people, people kind of say, okay, the biggest evidence against Aegon being a Blackfire is this conversation because Kevin says Aegon for a moment. He did not understand dead. He's dead. No, the eunuch's voice seemed deeper. He is hate here. Aegon has been shaped to rule since before he could walk. Um, and so this idea of like, we're taught. We're clearly talking about Rhaegar's son, Aegon. We're not talking about a Blackfire. We're talking about Aegon, uh, Rhaegar's son, and people kind of say, "Well, why would Varys lie to Kevin, considering that Kevin is a dying man?" And so, on this train of thought, if if Varys is being honest, like I guess Aegon can't be a Blackfire. But some people are just so caught up on Aegon being a Blackfire that like anything else can't be. So Savarius so must be lying somehow, but how is, how is it possible? Like why would Varys lie? And then the answer is, well, he's doing a show for the Raven <laughs> because blood Raven is in the Raven and Varys wants to trick blood Raven. So I suppose 
he could say he could trick the Raven by being like, okay, normally Blood Raven would do everything he could to stop a Blackfire from being put on the throne. But if he goes and he thoroughly can, tries to convince him that in, in this in this honest setting that he's trueborn, then Blood Raven will allow it to happen and that he's tricking Blood Raven into inaction. Um That's and that's it. That's uh <sighs> so I don't know. It's it's a little uh maybe, maybe. I mean I'm I'm also saying that like Var if you know somebody knows that Blood Raven is alive and they're trying to kill him. So who knows? Um, okay, here we go. Technically, Christian used to be Catholic until the Eastern split and then even more until the Reformation. Yeah, there's actually even more splits than that. But um, um, I mean, Catholic, I think the term Catholic just means Christian, doesn't it? I mean, everybody thinks they're the they're the. Um, um, I'm trying to think the the etymology of Catholic. Um, it comes from. Uh, no, it means what? Universal? It means universal. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there's been some other splits even before. I mean, the, uh, I mean, people say Eastern, but there's actually like weirdly Eastern and there's also Oriental, which are like actually not the same because it's two different splits. Um, but so for instance, like the Copts, the the Ethiopians, there's an Ori there's an Oriental Syrian. Like they're not they're not from the Orthodox split. But it's weird because people, you know, it gets confusing. So everyone's just like, ah, they're Eastern. There's there's <clears throat> there's Catholics, there's Protestants, and there's Eastern Orthodox, and that's the world we live in. And it's like, nah, it's a little more complicated than that. But, you know, I get it. But yeah, it's it's um you know, today we we Generally speaking, the, the the major three branches are that. But we've got some. We've got a whole bunch of. We've got little Oriental, or we've got little Oriental uh, Orthodox, and we have like um, I don't know where you put Mormons. Are Mormons Protestants? It's a. Uh, um, but yeah, it's it's Christianity's messy. It's very messy. Um. Let's see. I wonder if the push for gay marriage would be considered woke ideology these days. Woke right now just seems to be anything left wing. I mean, it, like the fact that like they call environmentalism woke, you know, or, or, or whatever. It's just it used to it used to kind of just mean politically correct. Like in the 90s, we use the term politically correct, like. Um, but now, now it seems to be even broader, just buzzwords. But I mean, and it is true that like buzzwords sell, somebody said here, but um, the reason they use these buzzwords is because if you're actually specific about stuff, it's really hard to unite people. Um, so people kind of like purposely choose things that are, that can meld you know like the american flag the american flag doesn't mean anything right it's just some 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 stripes right and some stripes and some stars but each person seems to somehow identify with it and so like if you want to bind people together without actually explicitly being like do you guys agree well we don't really agree but you can throw a flag up there this really abstract concept and everyone's like yes this flag so it's the same thing with like the the like the word woke or anything else like freedom, 
the word freedom or, you know, no one really knows like what exactly we're talking about, but it, 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 it allows for the uniting of people that would not unite because you're using an abstract term, you know? Um, so that, that's the thing with woke and, and a lot of other things like socialism, like people, you know, we, we're not sure what socialism is, but a lot of people seem to not like it. So uh, we're, people, people throw it out to try to unite people or something, you know, um, it's just <laughs> rest in peace or an all James Simpson, 2000 rushing yards. Oh, gosh. Did we go over before how, like, it's just kind of crazy that, like, that um, Kim Kardashian, like, is, is, is this huge thing because she was the daughter of O.J. Simpson's lawyer? Like, you know, like how the world ripples into things. Um, you know, there's a... Uh, but man, they, uh, when I was in, when I was in high school, uh, a friend of mine had a band called, um, uh, what was that? What was OJ's friend? Kano? OJ's friend was, can it, was it Kano Kalen? Is that it? What was his name? Kato. Kato Kalen. He called himself, he called his band Cato and the Big Mac Attack, which would not, I mean, today it would be like, what are you talking about? It'd be like, <laughs> it was like OJ Simpson's alibi was supposedly that he went with Cato to McDonald's. And so he had named his band Cato and the Big, Na Big Mac Attack. Um, he was a minor witness in 94. He was a house guest at Simpson's State. And was present at the compound. He was, everyone was made fun of him because he didn't, he was just like squatting like his friend. He didn't, um, he didn't have any money. So he was staying at his friend's house. Um, right. And he said that he was up because he'd gone to McDonald's. And so his testimony seemed to like go against anyway. Whatever, whatever. Ugh. Pretty sad, pretty sad to just have, you know, poor, uh, poor Ron Silver. And, and, but yeah, man, I just remember, I remember so much about that. Like, I remember, uh, so, I mean, I, you know, uh, I grew up in a pretty, whatever, sheltered suburb. And I remember going to college and I was like 18 years old. And it was the first time that I'd really been like in the city exposed to, you know, conspiracy minded regular folk. And I just remember like listening to people on the streets, like talking about OJ Simpson and being like, whoa, because I think he get he, his, his, his trial got off. Like he got off when I was in college. He was, he was arrested when I was in high school, but, um, yeah, but I just remember like, like old ladies being like, you know, that Ron Ron Silver, he was like thrown on the F word and stuff and like, uh, and, and all sorts of stuff like in defense of OJ and being like, wait, there are people that think OJ is innocent. And it was, it was like the first time, like I'd, I'd like been outside of like the bubble that, I'd, that of, um, you know, but man. Um, um, predict the future of GPO and Democratic Party in 10 years. What gives you hope and fear for the future? What happens after we die? <laughs> Sorry for the myriads. Um, the... Um, Oh, the group GPO group group policy organization. I'm not sure what GPO is or group policy objective. Um, 
not not too important. But uh, the future of the Democratic Party. Um, I mean, look what what I see happening. Um, the probable the probable outcome of this year, and and the probable. I'm not saying that I think that it's a, a sure thing. But I think the probable outcome of, of this year is that Biden wins wins re-election. And um and I think he'll do pretty well. I think he'll he'll do pretty well. I don't know if he's gonna have a, a strong enough majority that <coughs> um to pass much policy or or whatever. We're still gonna be in a bad situation because it takes a lot of votes to um to get things done. He needs like 60 senators and he's not getting that. So nonetheless, I, I you know, I see Biden get re, get Biden get a, getting reelected. I do see Trump going away. But the problem is that he's just Trump is just going to be replaced by some other jackass. The Trump voters and that segment of America is still exists. And they're 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 a problem. You know, they existed before. People forget, people forget that Sarah Palin was a thing. People forget, like, um, but, it, you know, I'll, I'll say this, you know, it's like the things that are like, some of the things that are negative are, are, are end up being positive. So, so for instance, like the fact that Roe v. Wade was repealed was a horrible thing, but politically for the Democratic Party and the left, it's the gift that keeps on giving. And as long as, um, reproductive rights are threatened in America. Women will be voting in 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 organized mobs to to like to try to bring it back, you know. Um, and with that will come a lot of other benefits, you know. So uh, I don't know. In ten years, I don't necessarily think things are going to be that different. You know, I still think there's going to be a large. Trump-like faction that's not Trump at the head, but somebody else. Um, and, uh, you know, um, Democratic, you know, people have to keep fighting. If we have to keep keep fighting for, for the, you know, our entire lives, you know, that's just how it, how it goes, how it goes. But it should be, it should be, it should be interesting. I mean, if we, if we look at actuaries, and like Biden should get reelected and but at the same time not survive to the end of his term, you know. Um, and then, you know, we'll see what we'll see what happens, what 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 happens next after that. But um, the hope is that I don't know. We'll see. Um, <laughs> I wonder if the foam panels on his wall really help with the acoustics in the room. I find them baffling. Uh, they do. They really do, dude. It's uh, um, it's a very different sound when you don't have the, the foam. The foam. It echoes. It echoes. That's the main thing. They don't actually absorb like sound. Like If there's something going on outside, you still hear it. But they're not soundproof. But you know, they get rid of the echo. Um, favorite Back to the Future th th movie. I like three. What do you like three? <laughs> Who likes Back to the Future three the most? No, I like them in order. One, two, three. Um. Uh, I think. Um, I don't know. Back to the Future three. It's not that it doesn't have like its moments it's a fine movie but it's just it's just not as interesting and as exciting as the other as the other two um uh the first one is just a very well paced movie that's just like really fun um and the second one is really fun it's it's all over the place and a mess but it's it's fun the third one is just it's a quieter movie it's probably a better made movie but it's um, then the second one, but I don't know. It doesn't seem as as exciting or, or interesting. I, I think it's because Michael J. Fox seems to take a back seat to to Doc Brown in that movie. Um, I don't remember. Like you don't really think of of Marty having much to do, uh, um, like he does in the in the first two movies. You know, he seems to 
seems to be more of a Doc Brown movie. Um, Machete and Machete Kills are also 2020, 2010 films I could not see modern Hollywood touching. There's a level of neo-puritism in Hollywood today. Um, I don't know about that. I mean, let me think about, like, let's look at 2024 films. Because, I mean, come on, De like, Deadpool's coming out this year, right? Um, okay. I don't know. There's a. I mean, one could say that like <clears throat> things are getting much much more violent and stuff like that. I mean, um, Jesus, hey Carmine, uh, I don't know if you want to call in and talk about Fallout a little bit. We're gonna talk about it. we're gonna do a podcast on it, but. Um, Like Fallout is made by the same Hollywood machine as, as anything else, and yet, you know, it's very racy, with its subject matter. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, the movies that came out this year, I don't really recognize anything like Argyle, Beekeeper, Mean Girls. But you know, keep in mind, like, really, really, um, I guess you know, as you say, like unpolitically correct movies, like. I don't know, King like uh Kingsman or whatever, super hyper violent movies. Like Quentin Tarantino's still doing movies. Um Machete and Machete Kills, like they're um you know, like what ironic violence? Like doesn't Deadpool have ironic violence? But you know, I I, I want to say there's there's a lot more blood and guts today than there used to be. Just like you know, people get shot and there's gallons of blood and guts everywhere. I don't know. I don't I don't know if there's. I, I don't know if I agree that there's neo puritanism in, in Hollywood today. Things are uh, things are super violent. Like the fact that the boys and Fallout and invincible are all made and put on on amazon prime the supposedly like super woke jeff bezos like channel like they're over the top you know um when it comes to when it comes to like violence um let's see who's more interesting bitter steel or blood raven the thing is we don't know anything about bitter steel. And so like, I would be more interested in finding out about bitter steel. So I'm going to like, think that bitter steel is more interesting because I want to find out more information about him. But blood Raven has gone through a more interest, like objectively speaking, he's gone through a more interesting uh, experience. He ran into children of the forest and joined a tree, you know, like, like that, by itself should be more interesting, but we don't know anything about bitter steel. So it's like, I want to find out more about him. So I think that's the whole thing about it, but, um, I've been thinking lately about Quentin Tarantino, Zack Snyder and Robert Rodriguez, what they were making and Hollywood has gone backwards roughly since 2016. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, let me think. I mean, I, I haven't seen like the, the Zack Snyder, the lightest Zack Snyder film, but isn't it quite violent? I mean, we're talking just violence here or, or, or sex or what, but, um, I mean, movies, movies are super hyper violent these days. Um, recent violent movies like i don't remember <clears throat> oh yeah i mean or like i mean i suppose we don't we don't currently have like the same 
torture porn um, horror movies that we used to. But I still feel like there's plenty of blood and guts everywhere. Um, you know. <clears throat> but again, I, I don't think it's like... Here, here's 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 the big thing though about that that I'm I'm um, disagreeing with this is, is is it's not like when you say like neo puritanism or something, okay. The puritans were motivated by religion as as like the source for why they did the things they did. Okay, there was like an original source to this, and so. When you say like, oh, Hollywood is, say, being puritanical, like, what is the cause of that? Because everything Hollywood does is for money. And so it's like, what do they think will market? You know, it's not like there's this this group think of like people that have come up with some like abstract morality that they're like pushing forward. Like, that's not actually the case. There's no there's no cabal of like people with values that are like, we need to push this out. Like the only thing Hollywood is interested in is money. So if you like find that you don't think a certain type of picture is out right now, it's because they don't think it's marketable right now. That's it. Um, you know, people talk about these things like, oh, they couldn't get away with that in movies these days. You know, yeah, maybe. But again, it's about like, it's about like who would complain and would the movie... Would, you know, would they get letters or would people boycott the movie and stuff like that? You know, um, like I was thinking about like somebody brought up the movie like uh, Better Off Dead. Better Off Dead is this John Cusack movie. And it's about this kid who um, uh, he's really depressed after a breakup and he's just always trying to kill himself. And today that probably wouldn't fly because, you know, uh, you want to be sensitive to people that are suicidal and people were re- very upset about um, seven reasons why and things like that. So like making light of suicide, you know, might not be like a movie that people would put out today, but it's only because like they're scared of somebody complaining, <laughs> you know, like it's not, it's not like someone in Hollywood is sitting there going, Hmm, yeah, that would just be that would just be wrong. It's just they're they're scared of someone complaining and and boycotting the movie and it not making money. Like that's it. Um, like it's not that they're not like the morality and choices don't start in Hollywood. Like the only thing they're caring about is money. They're gauging what they think like the public is going to um, eat. You know. So like when you say like oh, society has been going backwards. Well, in many ways, it's like, it's a reflection of, I mean, Hollywood's been going backwards. Well, if, if that's true, and I don't even think it's true, um, but if it were, it's just kind of a reflection of like consumers. Um, Uh, rank the top hands and players behind the scenes in the song of ice and fire. Speaking of Luther, listen to a terrific podcast on him called the rest is history. Oh yeah. With uh, I mean, I imagine we're talking about Martin Luther. Um, yeah, it's the, uh, certainly a weird time. Everyone talks about like reformation and like, Oh, um, you know, what if other religions had, had the same sort of reformations as, as, as Christianity. And in many ways they, you know, they have, but they just weren't as successful as, as Protestantism. But anyway, <clears throat> um, rank the top hands and players behind the scenes. I mean, the big players behind the scenes is, you know, you obviously got blood Raven, you got, you got Varys, you got Littlefinger, And then the hope the hope, and this is based on just nothing, but the hope is that you get 
um, Dora and Martell in there doing something crazy. But there's still a lot of people that are like, no, Doran's an idiot, you know, and has done nothing. So as for like effective hands, that's that's interesting. I mean, Tywin, Tywin, I suppose, was able to pull off some like the Red Wedding was was a pretty big was a pretty big power move that was very successful. Um, and that was all Tywin, you know, so what's funny is that like, I'm thinking of like the other hands and the other hands have not been very good. Like, I don't think Tyrion was a very good hand, uh, despite, I think the story trying to put forward that he was a good hand. Um, obviously Ned's a horrible hand. John Aaron was okay. John Aaron did a really good job. Um, but I'm trying to think of anybody, any, uh, what, who's hand after, after Tyrion it's, it's Tywin. And then, um, hand of the king becomes uh oh uh swift see hand of the king after that I mean, he's no good <laughs> and then um and then mace tyrell he has another time so in the story we only have really one effective hand and that's tywin um i mean i guess Tyrion comes in second only because everybody else is really bad at being hand but um yeah, I mean, those are the big ones. I think, you know, Varys, Littlefinger, Doran, Bloodraven. Mm, but yeah, um, that's about it. Oh, oh, this was... um. Oh, somebody was like Preston Genius doesn't doesn't can't figure out typos. The GPO was GOP. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> women be shopping and women be voting. That's true. That's true. Look at this guy. I love your work, but you're a terminal mm. libtard. God bless your soul. I mean, the thing is, is like this. This is what I think is very funny. Is that like um, some people are like, oh, Preston, he's got all of like these crazy political beliefs, and it's like I am like a very typical liberal. Like in European realm, it's like because America is screwed up, like. I'm on the conservative end of the spectrum, like very practical person, you know, when people are like, Oh, like the, fu like the fundamental beliefs that I have is like, you know, Scandinavia, Scandinavian governments work pretty well. We should probably try to emulate those. Like that's like the end, like the alpha and the omega of my, of like my belief structure that like, let's not be all weird and theoretical about it. Like, and it's just like, you get these like comments, like, Oh, you're like, like, libtard like there's actually this belief that like if you're liberal you're retarded you see there's still we're still going to use the term retarded which has been which has been what put to bed 40 years ago and we're, but we're going to combine it with like liberal and then you see everyone that's liberal is somehow retarded you see and that's even though like there's like it's so like practical like just regular stuff. You know, I'm not talking about like tearing down the system. I'm not talking and but at the same time like man. Like like for the past for the past like <laughs> for more than my entire life like Roe v Wade was in place and it seemed to be working really well and the fact that it was repealed has been causing a lot of chaos. But for me to be like, you know what? We should probably have Roe v Wade again. Oh no. You're a you're a libtard, you know, <laughs> like, like what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Oh man, it's like insane. Like I mean, you're gonna use that word. Plus that that word has been like it's like from from like 20, 2015. Oh man. Um.
mm, CGI looks less realistic compared to practical effects of the 80s. I, you know, I do kind of, I agree with that. Um, I do think, but it's, you know, obviously it's cheaper and it's about, you know, but, uh, you know, don't we all occasionally watch the Corridor Crew and they had a, they had a video recently about how Mary Poppins did things that like Mary Poppins does things with, with green screen that like they can't do today because they use a different method. And, um, and it's, it's, it's very, it's very kind of interesting. It makes you go back and appreciate it and be like, Oh, right. Mary, Mary Poppins. Huh. Um, but I do kind of agree. There's something about those practical effects. However, some people say that it's like what, you know, what you're kind of used to, like, why, why, why do I pre preserve, like, why do I prefer to see like a puppet on screen, even though puppets like don't really look real. Like I somehow think they look more real than CGI or something. And some people have argued that it's about what your brain is attuned to, um, that biases you. Like Carmine and I were talking about that that a couple of weeks ago. The Jose YouTuber called Jose. He's he's got a a video where he talks about how there's a there's this whole grifter element that anytime you have like a female character beat up a male character, they're like, oh, so unrealistic. Oh my gosh, that's just so ridiculous that a female character is beating up a male character because male characters are like stronger than female. You know, generally men are stronger than women, you know, in the in the in a in a muscle sense, right? Um, and you're like, sure, it's unrealistic, but how many movies do you watch where it's like five on one and the protagonist just like defeats five dudes and you just like accept it? You know, you know, and you're and you're like, oh right, because you've been raised your whole life watching entertainment where a five on one situation is normal. But you haven't been raised uh, in a situation where women are beating up men. Um, and it's just kind of what you've been conditioned to. So it's true, though. To my eyes, Jim Henson puppets like are the fucking bomb and it's the end-all be-all. And The Dark Crystal was like the greatest movie ever made, you know? <laughs> um, um, my fear is that Biden will be violence my fear is that Biden will be violence from Trump supporters as a result, but I hope not. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, we'll see if there's any, you know, the thing is, is a lot of these Trump rallies, uh, fewer people show up than normal. Um, people have kind of learned the lesson that you can get arrested for doing things like January 6th. So hopefully that, that, um, you know, my hope is that Biden gets elected and Trump kind of just, goes away quietly maybe they you know take his maybe he appears in the news because you know another lawsuit is against him but that he just you know and he might scream like oh after he gets after he loses his election he might be like oh it was a, it was another it was cheating again but this time like no one shows up to like do his do his uh rallies because last time it didn't go over that well um, what do you think sets A Song of Ice and Fire apart from other epic fantasy series, like in a good way? I think, um, George R. Martin's characterization, I think is a cut above other people's, um, characterization. You know, I've really, I've thought about like, I've like reading, um, Wheel of Time recently it's not that wheel of time isn't complicated and it's not that wheel of time doesn't have a million characters and it's not that wheel of time doesn't have like very pretty prose i don't think it's quite as pretty as george r martin but it's um it's 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 still pretty good you know but the big difference is when you hear george r martin characters talk to each other it just pops it's there's he george r martin's really a master at really good dialogue that brings out um real you know characters in, in, in a sense i think george r martin is a lot like quentin tarantino um i think quentin tarantino is better dialogue writer but um but there's he's not necessarily great at like as good at like making distinct characters so like 
George R. R. Martin, like, you know the character. You're like, you know what Ed, Ned is like. You know what Robert is like. You know what Littlefinger is like. It's just, you feel it. You feel it on the page and it sticks out. And, and you can read other stories and it's just not like that. Like, you read, like, um, you guys ever read The Magicians um, by Lev Grossman? And it's like, every character is the same. Like, every character is like, you know, sarcastic and into themselves and, and really talented and super talented and like super clever, but not likable. And you're like, every single character is exactly the fucking same. Um, and that's a book that I think is actually pretty good. You know, like I, like, don't get me wrong. I think magicians is a good book, but it doesn't have the same characterization as George R. R. Martin. When you read George R. R. Martin's stuff, like it instantly, you know, that character, um, just, uh, I don't know. It's so I think that's that that's the main thing. Like, yeah, George R. R. Martin has, you know, very beautiful prose. He does. But lots of authors have beautiful prose. You know, he's got a really cool, big world. He, but a lot of characters, a lot of authors have that. I think it's I think I really do think it's his dialogue and, and like making the characters come out. But, you know, I, I think with the 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 obsessive the fan community, it's a lot about the, the riddles and the theories. Um, and stuff like that. I think that pulls in a lot of people. Um, but we're 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 the vast minority. I mean, come on, like not not everyone is like us. It's like you know. Um, so, like I'm thinking, thinking about like Lord of the Rings. When people that are into Lord of the Rings, it, I feel like the reason that they're into it is because they want to have that encyclopedic knowledge of the story because it's so vast. But that's not why most people like Lord of the Rings. Most people like Lord of the Rings because it's the, it's a it's a <clears throat> fun magical adventure. Um, it's uh, so it's like that's what most people like out of it. Most people aren't trying to obtain an encyclopedic knowledge of of the of the literature, you know. Um. So, I mean, Ice and Fire is wonderful for theory crafting, but at the same time, I think it's, it's a lot about the dialogue. And then, you know, there's, there's some real, some real emotional hits, you know, um, was Dragonstone really a slight mayhaps Robert wanted his best commander close and ready. And did you guys already produce the Mrs. Davis video? <clears throat> Fuck. Did we? I don't think we have talked about. I don't think we did do a Mrs. Davis video. I think we we, we wanted to. Were we? I think we. I think Carmine and I might have been waiting for Trey the Explainer to finish Ms., uh, Mrs. Davis, and then we forgot about it. Um, we should probably go back to it because Mrs. Davis is it was it was really great. Um, was Dragonstone really a slight? No, no, Robert. <clears throat> Robert really did. I mean want to have i think i think it was even said at some point that he wanted um stannis because stannis was was actually the the navy guy and so he wanted to have have him out on dragonstone um to for for that reason but um but like stannis took it as a slight but really you know robert should have switched it at some point like he should have been like hey renly so Robert was just kind of being dumb about, dumb about it. He just didn't care about Stannis enough. But does Robert even does Robert even mention his his brother's brother by name at any point? Um. In 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 his story, I want to say. Lord Stannis. Renly makes fun of him. But I don't think, I don't even know if, uh, if Robert even talks about Stannis once. Stannis, Stannis. 
Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the thing to really like. That's how clueless Robert was. He just doesn't even think about Stannis. But. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, we should definitely do the. Um, uh, let me ask Carmine if he's coming on tonight. You're going to call in. Um, <laughs> Smitty. The only time Preston thinks Danny Frig's slaves was good. I know, man. It's, uh, it's, Preston's policy positions would, would would enjoy a majority of America. Government is is much more conservative than the people. Somehow, though, I think like the the right wing right wing media would convince people. The right wing media is very very good at convincing people to to vote against their best interests, um, which is the the sad thing. Um, Huh. The idea that Preston is chugging woke juice is so funny. <clears throat> Preston has the normie liberal dad opinion that I hear as a voice of moderation compared to some people. I mean, I'm more liberal now than I was when I was younger. I don't know if it's like become the liberal dad. I mean, I, I guess I am a liberal dad, but like, um, I don't think it, like I became a liberal dad because like, I've gotten more and more liberal as time as time has gone on. Um, uh, but that's uh, that's about it. Are we talking about Preston in a fight? <laughs> I've got reach. Um, I mean, the big thing, the big thing about fighting is that it's mostly about like once you get into it, I would never, so you don't box a boxer and you don't wrestle a wrestler, but like I would never get into a boxing match with anyone because I'm no, no good at boxing. So the idea is that I would immediately get into a wrestling match with somebody and then I've got the massive advantage because I weigh more than most people. Which is I, I very much like encourage other people like if if someone wants to box you, it's usually because they're really good at boxing. So don't do it. Get into a wrestling match if you weigh more than them. If they weigh more than you, run the other way. <laughs> but like just if you if you weigh more than somebody, you're going to be able to overpower them for the most part. Like some people have special moves and they can put you in a headlock and make you pass out or whatever. But for the most part, if you weigh more than somebody get on top of them and and uh that's the, that's your best way to best way to go and if you're if you if if it's a like a fight for your life kind of situation get on top of them wrestling grab their ear rip their ear off and that's how you're going to survive you know if somebody's trying to kill you wrestle them rip their ear off you know that's 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 what i can that's what i can, go for their nuts you know that's all i can say fight like hell um, there's a lot less nudity in House of the Dragon than Game of Thrones and a lot of sci-fi and action women's costumes are less skimpy than in the 2010s which is often a good thing um, well, let me think about this though because <clears throat> the thing the, so the thing about but this is again like market kind of stuff right like it used to be that people would go to movies to see nudity and now you don't need to do that. Porn is free. Porn is free and ubiquitous. So like, do you need to go to movies to see people in skimpy outfits anymore? Um, and so now it's like, 
you know, it's a, it's, it's a money thing. You, you know, you go to an actress, an actor, an actress, and you're like, Oh, can you do a nude scene? And you're like, Oh, well now it's going to, you know, it's going to cause some, some more, you know, more money, more issues, things like that. Um, so it's just like, eh, it's, it's, it, but again, it's not like somebody sitting in a room being like, you know, we should not have these women be in skimpy outfits. It's, you know, there's usually some other issue going on. Um, but I don't know. People are still in pretty, pretty, pretty sexy outfits. I mean, um, let me see here. Here, here, here's the thing. Okay. So, I mean, if we're talking about like sex appeal and stuff, right? Like this is Lucy from Fallout, the 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 show. And here is this is Lucy from the game. Okay. Now you can see there's just a lot more sex appeal and stuff added to Lucy in the show than Lucy in the game, right? So I don't know if like things are things are you know necessarily uh um with regards to these trends, I think you know there's plenty of uh Plenty of uh, skimpy, skimpy outfits and things like that going on. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I mean, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra in the book is uh, it's not supposed to be as attractive as Rhaenyra in the show and things like that. But I think, I mean, we got We got a, We got an orgy. We got an orgy in House of the Dragon season one. We got we got that kind of stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> do to do to do, do, do. Where, where's my, where's my, here it is. Why, hello, hello. Who decided to finally come in? Oh, were you waiting for me this entire time? <laughs> I wanted to, it's a few times where I was like, oh, I need to ask Carmine about that. Um, uh, I don't think uh, Lucy from the games is the same person as Lucy from the show. I think it's an original character. Lucy from the show. Oh, Have really? you finished it? How far along are you? Four, four episodes. Oh, bro. I, I, so Fallout, just so you're aware, because everything gets kind of explained at the last episode, just so you're aware, yes, Fallout is that kooky, that crazy, mm. and that insane. Um, are you familiar with the, uh, I forgot the Vault Boy thumbs up thing? Um, yeah, we got, we got that far in the show, yeah. So you know, like who the Fallout Boy, uh, yeah. fall, uh, Fallout Vault Boy, thumbs up person is supposed to be? That blew my fucking mind because I'm like, oh my god! Because whenever you see that that like little caricature, like doing the thumbs up, it's usually attached to something ridiculous, silly, and or morbid. And right. I'm like, oh my god, he's the guy. So fans of the game are enjoying it. You're you're a non game. We'll discuss it when we have Ness on. And and, yeah. and go into the intricacies of it, but um, for the most part, I, I finished it. I liked it a lot. I thought it was great. No, no, was, I th I think it's a really really excellent show. The the um, I was just surprised at the tonal shift from episode one to episodes two, three, and four. I think there's a serious tonal shift, um, from the opening episode to the to the later ones. But it's also randomly horny ran at random times. You know, I didn't expect yeah. that. I don't remember if the games I haven't played Fallout 4 in ages. But by the way, if you actually do want to play the games, I know you'll say no. But if you do, I think Fallout 4 is perfect for beginners. It takes place in the I think in Massachusetts yeah. Commonwealth. So um, I, I don't remember it being that horny. I really don't. Well, but, you know, so like I say, sex, sex sells. They're going to they're going to throw in some throw in some sex, you know uh um, what happened just what's the last thing you saw um where am i um 
the last thing I saw was the 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 pregnant woman um tries to have sex with Lucy's cousin. That's episode four? I think that's episode four. Maybe I'm maybe that's episode three. Um, I don't know. I think I'm in four. I watched the or I, I'm around where he finds the other ghoul and he and they, and they shoot him in the head. Oh, no, no. She gets dropped off to get her out of her organs har- harvested. That's okay. So, so I love I love the scene where he goes, fuck, I just I just posted it on Twitter. I just posted this shit on Twitter. Hold yeah, on. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I don't know why I can't remember it now, but I don't know how she didn't laugh hysterically after he goes, come on, Valdi. As jerky don't make itself. Like I just I la- I cracked up so hard. I fucking if you go back and watch that scene, which I posted on my Twitter, yeah, yeah. you can tell the actress is trying hard not to laugh. Come on, Valdi. As jerky don't make itself. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. you know, I it's a really it's a really strong show. The the only I mean, obviously like the 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 anal logistics person is is constantly like, it's been two hundred years, that shouldn't there's that shouldn't be here anymore. Like, you know, like that happens to me a lot where I'm just like, well, and then my excuse, my headcanon is, well, it takes place in a retro futurist world to start with. Maybe their steel doesn't rust as fast as our steel. Their spam cans can last longer than our spam cans. Like people are still opening cans of spam and it's been 200 years. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> you're, you know, like, there's no more spam. Like it's called, like the show is also super unrealistic because um, Lucy's not going around picking up random bullshit off the ground, which is something you do do in the game. You pick up like like ashtrays and aluminum foil and shit, so you can go yeah. back to home base and construct crap. So, and it's also the game is uh, the show is also very unrealistic. The game there was no bugs or crashes throughout the entire viewing. A very un very unlike a Bethesda yeah, game. Yeah. For the most part. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, also, the, like the, the the plot relies on a lot of coincidences to save the characters at various moments that mm. are a little that are a little ridiculous. But the whole the whole we'll, plot we'll, is ridiculous, and I get that it's supposed to be ridiculous. We'll get into it when we do like the because yeah. th- there's so much I want to like cover with. But there, you. There, there's the so many moments though. where you're like, okay, no, like Lucy should be dead now. Like, how, what? No, you know, but. Oh well. Oh well. It's a good. By the way, good, you, yeah, it's a really good show. I'm really good, enjoying it. Great show. Um, because you mentioned it earlier, Mrs. Davis. So, I did the ultimate test to see if a certain person I know would like Mrs. Davis. I know this one guy. Um, he goes by the name Bear. Not a YouTuber. Just a guy yeah. I play games with. Older man. Very nice guy. He's a pastor. Mm. He's a pastor in California. Very nice man. Very nice. Not like awful douchey Christian. Actually, very down to earth. Salt cool guy um i had him watch mrs davis he and his wife who belonged to a church both watched up to episode three they didn't like it they they didn't hate it they didn't want to continue far i kind of want to have him on and grill him on why he didn't continue with it but something tells me he didn't he didn't like that jesus is in it (laughs) that jesus christ is a character i don't think he liked that i don't know they do need to get to the end of it though for the full explanation um yeah that's, that's not gonna happen my love that's not gonna happen. I don't oh, know why. Too bad. Which is weird because he loves. He's. I hate. I. I hate that I'm gonna bring this up, but he loves the leftovers. That's one of his favorite shows yeah, yeah. of all time. So your kindred spirits. In I that mean, sense. right. I mean, I get it because, like, uh, I mean, this is a very small, irrelevant part of the plot, but like, like the fact that a character is having sex with Jesus, um, is shocking to people. Okay, and even though the explanation to it at the end like explains why jesus would be having sex with this person um at least in her head you know like in her head like all of this is explained by by story's end i could see a christian being like oh they're showing jesus fucking like i'm going to turn this off you know oh um Real quick for Fallout, the reason why there's such a tonal shift is because they had Nolan directing the first three episodes, and then they but, changed but it shifts, every time. It shifts in the Nolan episodes, though. I'm saying that the first episode by itself has a very different tone to episodes two, three, which are all Nolan. So I don't know. I mean, someone asked me what games do you play with a pastor? I play 
uh, I played du Destiny Destiny Two, unfortunately, and I hate Specif myself. Specifically, I would say the tone of the Maximus story shifts majorly from from mm. Episode One on. Like Maximus is complete, completely straight, and the Maximus world is completely straight, and then all of a sudden, like Maximus is. Like you know, do. Why are you comedy. telling me this now? Sa save it for when we discuss it. Okay, 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 okay. How are you not binging this? By the way, like I, I watched. I, like at the moment I got to episode four, I'm like, fuck, I gotta finish this now. I gotta. I, I, I don't. I, how am I not binging it? Because I don't have the hours. I don't have the hours in my day. <laughs> oh, that's right. I okay, I do not literally have the hours. I know. Whatever. <sighs> Many years ago. I know. I know. <laughs> uh debate's gonna happen ba biden ain't got trump 1v1 um uh i don't think debates are gonna happen right i just don't think i don't think either side i mean i don't know if like trump just doesn't like debating and um you know i don't necessarily think either would look good in a in a debate um so i don't know I don't know. Um, I would love if, like, during a debate, Trump shits his pants and the MAGA cultists are like, well, that's a strategic strategy to throw off his opponent. Sure. Maybe. Um, um, are ears that easy to rip off? Uh, yeah, they are. They are. The The... If you if you're if you're in a fight and you got adrenaline going, you're gonna you're gonna rip that ear straight off. Um, hi Preston, love your Game of Thrones read so far. First time uh, I'm reading the novels in English. Have you changed your mind about Littlefinger's Endgame? Um, in general, I think in the past few years, I've had a shift in. Um, my confidence in the George R. Martin master plan of everything, you know, and I understand like from the beginning, like George R. Martin was like, Oh, I'm a gardener. I don't really know where the story's going, but I used to, <clears throat> I used to like look at the product that was there. Like say like when I was in 2011, like reading a dance with dragons and, be, and, you know, that book has just come out and you're like, wow, this is such a piece. This is such a genius, great thing. And all of these little details are there. And I was so convinced that George R. Martin, like, was a genius. I still think he's a genius, but I think I was unrealistic about what the, his human mind could, like, do. And the fact that, like, we haven't seen a book in 13 years makes me think, oh... Like he actually doesn't have a master plan to everything. Like, and you know, um, he he he's kicking the the can down down the road, being like, I've I've introduced all of these these cool elements, and these elements might be something really awesome, but I haven't figured out what those elements are, and um, that has made me kind of lose confidence, not just in my theories, but every theory, like every theory, um kind of stepped back and been like, oh, maybe George maybe wasn't thinking about it because he, I mean, he was just writing. And so like, um, so like, you know, this idea about like the little finger debt scheme and stuff like that. And it's not that I don't think that like George thought of these ideas. I don't know if he put them all together into into like a cohesive plot you know he, he like it, one day he might have had this idea like oh yeah you know little figure he's really interested in the um in um uh the florence yeah yeah maybe that's going to be an element later on and he writes a bunch of stuff about little finger being interested in the florence and then later on he's got some int you know yeah i've got these ideas that maybe little figure was doing some stuff with debt you know i i think i'm f somewhat confident that that George was thinking about that with regards to like, you know, beggaring the realm and, and I'm eventually going to have a plot that has to do with the bank of Bravo. So maybe I'll have little finger do some stuff with some debt, but I don't know if he, if he really had the specifics hammered out 
on on any of these th- sorts of things. And so, past few years, I've yeah, I've had a um, really like I've really like stepped down my like expectations of what George R. R. Martin was capable of. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think in the end, he thinks that like he's like, oh, Littlefinger is a really smart guy. We'll see. I'm not sure what he's up to. And then he leaves it like that, you know, that in George R. R. Martin's head, he doesn't know what any of these characters are going to do. He doesn't have a master plan for any of it. Um, so, um, I don't know. I mean, I have, I, I, I can, you know, based on like the text that's there, like a lot of times, like I'll rewatch my own th- theory video and then I'm like, oh, right. No, I made a really good argument there. And then I'm back on track. I'm back in there. I'm being like, no, no, no. I made a good argument. So I want to say that like based on the text and based on the video I've made, like it's probably a pretty strong theory. But like in the end, like my, my confidence in George in general has just like plummeted in the past few years. Um, Chris Carmine was never a theory guy, so he didn't fucking care. <laughs> Nani? What do you mean? You said that you didn't really believe in any theories, except for like uh, super obvious ones, like Frey Pie. How dare you, Frey Pie forever? Uh, I like I like time traveling. Bran is the Night King. That's cool. Um. Wow. Yeah. There's a couple of theories I like and believe. Uh, I can't recall off the top of my head which ones. Uh, Wait, don't you know which ones I like? You should Grave know which Digger. ones I like. You said you believe in Grave Digger. R uh, yeah, Grave Digger. J, There's some, some good Frey ones for pies. that. Frey Pies, R plus J. Yeah, yeah, the basic bitch ones. No, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, may I ask... Why do you need? Uh, why did you need permission to upload in Taiwan? Because for me, it was a sharp reminder that different countries have different laws. Um, uh, I don't know if I ever asked um, anyone in the Taiwanese government about it. I think I just like, kind of like did it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I I think there was like a brief thing with my wife like asking if no I think I think at some point like my wife asked about something about employ um and if it was allowed and it was but I think it had to do with like my it had to do with like them double checking like being safe on things but I'll tell you if you just like travel to Taiwan and are living in Taiwan and start doing YouTube stuff. No one's coming for you. <laughs> you know, like no one's finding out about it. You know, you can just do it. Um, so it's, it's not, um, you know, it may be that they have some sort of laws about it, but you know, no one's necessarily going to come for you. Uh, like, you know, you'd have to have like somebody complain and then the government, like somebody sit down and be like, oh, what is this person doing within our borders? You know, that kind of stuff. But there, I think there was a mo- there was a time where, yeah, when I first arrived where my, my wife asked, you know, the Amer- the uh, the American Institute, which is the American embassy um, about it. But uh, but that was it. Um, I don't, and, and obviously I guess they have to like check with like, with the Taiwanese government, but it was kind of a, to be safe kind of thing, but, um, mm-mm. um, <clears throat> did Jamie mastermind the red wedding? That's yes. A f- <laughs> um, that would be something, right? Uh, no, we kind of know we're in Jamie's head, and he when he hears about the wedding, he gets a bad feeling because he knows that something's amiss. I want to say, so we kind of know from being in Jamie's head that he's not the mastermind of it. Um, not to mention the fact that he was in captivity when the red wedding was kind of put together i think he was 
right? Like uh, Catalan had had him had him in captivity, or the uh, Rob had him in captivity <clears throat> throughout a clash of kings. Um, he says here. Because I'm trying to say he when he says, I think there's something about like when he says, you know, say, give Rob Stark my regards. Um, and then he. Uh, doesn't he say that not Rob Stark? Hmm. I'm trying to trying to. I thought there was a moment where he says like give my regard to to rob stark but i'm missing it because like roos bolton at some point tells him i've, I've got to go to a wedding um <clears throat> hmm. Oh well, I'm trying to find it. Oh well. Um. Oh, so Carmine, I thought I thought we told Trey to um to watch Mrs. Davis. Right? Trey's very busy. He, he's Trey is a very busy man. He's not married, nor does he have kids, but. Posting sexy pics on Twitter takes just as much time. So <sighs> I can hit him up. I know for a fact that he's gone back and is rereading a Game of Thrones. And I'm going to um, I'm waiting for us to do that brand conversation because I really want to like group it together with the Fallout combo. I'm rereading brand two mm -hmm. because of what you said. So and I know that Ness will be reading brand two as well. So yeah. we're, we know what, what's going on. Um. So, so recently I did a, um, it's on Patreon right now. It'll, I'll probably post it on, on my main channel. The brand two? The brand two. My brand two. I'm going okay. over brand two. I'll probably mm -hmm. post it on, on the main channel on, on, um, on Tuesday. But going over brand two, unlike like some of the chapters, like going over Aria one, <clears throat> I was like really shocked how much I liked Aria one and like was like, oh, this is a really, really great introduction to Aria. This is a really well put together chapter or like how much I love Catalan two, even though Catalan two is filled with so many contradictions um, and retcons. I still love Catalan two as a chapter um, or the prologue, you know, but it's weird, like pulling out brand two and I'm just like, wow, what a sloppy chapter. This is not a good chapter <laughs> despite being so iconic, right? Like brand two, is the chapter that that Bran gets thrown from from the, from the tower, but it's a really sloppy chapter, and so Carmine and I are gonna sit down and talk about why Bran two is not a great chapter, and how George R. R. Martin screwed up with that screwed screwed up with that chapter quite a bit. You're 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 gonna explain to me why it's because I, I like I'm going through it now. I I don't see anything too bad with it. I don't see anything. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with it. You're gonna have to uh, go into detail as to yeah, why. Yeah, we'll you think go. I don't want to spoil everything, but yeah. No, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah. So, <clears throat> but yeah, no, I have real problems with it. I have real problems with it. I think it's like I think it's a. I think I mean I'm I'm ruining it, but like, I think in the end, George had this exciting ending that he needed to the chapter, and then he's just like, "What am I gonna do with the rest of it?" I, it, so the rest of it is kind of filler until he gets to that ending. Um, but anyway, I think I, we'll, we'll talk about it in detail sometime. But we could try to, try to finish Mrs. Davis. So we could talk about Mrs. Davis. Why don't you message him? 
Okay, I will. I will. Fine, maybe I will. <laughs> yeah, message, message him on Discord or Twitter. I'll be like, oh, Preston, what a surprise. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. Um, how are the Jamie submissions going? I know it's going to be a great chapter, even if it takes a bit to perfect the dialogue. Any teasers on Tyrion 3? Um, so, uh, Jamie, Jamie, wait, I got a couple couple submissions in already. They usually come in right before the deadline. But I'm feeling stronger about the Jamie sub, uh, chapter. Like, one thing as well is, like, you kind of, like, I kind of cut, like, I spend a lot of time to come up with the outline. And then after I submit the outline... Like other ideas start popping in my head later on, on like stuff that'll that'll be really nice um, that I don't necessarily want to spoil. But like there's there's like I come up with other good ideas later on and then they get sprinkled in and then you read the submissions and you get all, all, all sorts of more ideas. And then it just it, it comes together really great. Um, any teasers for season for Tyrion three? Um It's mostly it's mostly done Tyrion three. It uh, I, I need one more editor to kind of kind of um take a look at it but it's um it's it's faster and more exciting than i thought it would be there's a lot of action um i think it's uh i think it's um i don't know carmine you read it anything you can say about the Tyrion three at this moment we we discussed this last time on stream because uh, yeah. you asked me the same thing. I I liked it. I I I get what did I do? I gave it three thumbs up. No, three uh, thumbs I, up. I, no, I I asked you this privately. I'm surprised you chose not to go with the original ending. Yeah, for that switched, one switched around the ending a bit, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, because I asked you like, are you afraid you're gonna make your Tyrion kind of like the Tyrion? No, the it show? wasn't that. It was more that, <clears throat> um. You know the 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 bear joke. I I think I felt like it was too famous to be the ending. That like I can use the bear joke, but if it's the ending, it's just like like everybody that knows that bear joke is just going to be like, oh well, that's the bear joke. So I, I think it was like that it was a big influence on me. Was was not wanting to do something that was just um, a little too famous. But even though the joke is still in there, but or the, the comment is still in there, you know, so. Um, but. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. There, 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 there's some there's some there's a yeah, I think there's some really great stuff. Like even if you just have just paid attention to the outline, there's some some other stuff that's been added that I think adds a lot more um, uh, to it. So I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be fun, especially, you know, mentions of get men, mentions of Gary, Uncle Gary is the big thing. Men, Uncle Gary gets some gets some gets some shout outs. You can't go wrong with Uncle Gary, right? 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 Uh, right, Carmine. <laughs> Gary. Uh... They call him Uncle Gary in A Storm of Swords. I I just can't wait till people. I want to I want to know the fandom's reaction to. The, the the plans you have in store for some of these characters. Oh, Gary. <laughs> uh, thank you for the detailed response. I'm a little sad that you've lost confidence in George R. R. Martin, but that means the Winds of Winter has a better chance of blowing your mind. First of all, if the Winds of Winter comes out, that's already blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> No, absolutely. Um, you know, look, I'm always, I'm always impressed, like impressed with, you know, when the writing comes out, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with it. Like, like, you know, like that, I, I still remember like the joy of like listening to the, the, the forsaken chapter the first time and being like, Oh my God, it's so fucking incredible. Were you there in person? Yeah, I was there in person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by the way, um, yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah, but you know, and so I, I I hope I'm wrong. I hope the Winds of Winter comes out, and I have lots of cool chapters to go over that are going to blow my mind. You know, I have I have like a whole George R. R. Martin convo. I kind of wanted to get in with you, and it really annoyed the fuck out of me. It, it's it's one of those things where if you pay attention, um, it'll start to annoy you too. Do you want to just knock this guy's super chat out? And we'll get into it. Sure, sure. 
Um, who'd win single combat, Rob or Joffrey? <clears throat> hmm. I mean, Rob's older, right? Rob's, um, I want to make sure about, because this is a big, big kind of thing. So Joffrey is, Joffrey is born in getting it, getting it all. What? Where's his age? He was born in 80, 286. And Rob Stark is born in in 283. Oh, that's a significant age difference. Um, <clears throat> look, I mean, Joffrey's taller, so he has more reach, but Rob Stark's older. He's three years older. Like when it comes to like training and everything, that means he has three more years of training. Um, I feel like Rob would, Rob just on that fact is going to defeat Joffrey uh, in single combat. Like even if, even if Joffrey is really good for his age, he's not three, he's not three years more advanced. Like you take something else and being like, okay, how about we set, you know, we send a, a 15-year-old against a 12-year-old playing basketball. Who do you think is going to win one-on-one? -on -one? You'd be like, well, obviously the 15-year-old, you know? Like, it's going to be the same with sword fighting, you know? It's definitely Rob. I think Rob, like... Well, you should probably clear up. You meant you mean book, not show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Book, 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 yeah. But it's definitely going to be Rob. Um. Plus, I mean, isn't isn't... Joffrey disarmed by by Arya or something, <laughs> you know. So, um, all right. Anyway, Carmine, we gotta wrap things up pretty pretty soon. So I'm just gonna we we have our last discussion here. I'm gonna a answer this like last couple, um, uh, super chats here. Uh, what's the right way to discipline a child? Um, I don't know. I mean, you kind of, you, you kind of figure, I don't know. You kind of figure it out as you, as you go along. Like we, I live in a, in an age where, you know, you're obviously not allowed to, you, you, you know, you're not going to hit a kid anymore. That's just not, not something that's done. Um, some people say timeouts don't work. Some, so we've never given our kid a timeout, but other people do timeouts. Uh, but I've heard that that's like not something you're supposed to do because I don't know, the kid doesn't really understand. So I like try to explain to him the way things go. I mean, sometimes, <clears throat> you know, we take away tablet time, but I don't know. Uh, it's one of those things where it's like, you got me, man. Like, uh, it's try to figure it out, but I, I, I do not have, I do not have very good ideas on it at all. You know. This is not the same. I want to make this very clear to the audience. This is not the same for Latino and black parents. Black parents and Latino parents are very much old school. Fuck you mm -hmm. up. This is not oh, the yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah. Like specifically, my, my buddy Jackson was explaining because he's a, he's an African American. He was telling me how yeah, black moms don't play around. Black moms they won't just send your ass to time out to your room with your video games and your big screen TV. Black moms. Like they will send you to Ukraine as a punishment. They won't send you. They won't send you to your room. Like so. Same with Latinas. Latinas yeah. don't fuck around. Get the belt. <coughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, how much time has passed from the beginning of Game of Thrones to A Dance with Dragons? Why isn't George R. R. Martin uh, clear about the passage of time? Any video blog about it? Um, I mean, sometime I can go over over it, but it's um. He occasionally does put in roughly like how much time has passed. So, I mean, we know that a Game of Thrones is about a year. A Clash of Kings is about six months. A Storm of Swords is about three to four months. Um, and then A Feast for Crows to Dance with Dragons is about like six or seven months. It's, it, you know, and there's, there's various things you can look into about 
um, at, at different times where they where they say like you know half a year passed or something and things are like you know, rounding. There's a lot of rounding, but um, you know generally speaking, we do hear about people's you know ages changing, their name days happening, um, you know. Um, you know, a character who is, who is eight, it was six, you know, two books back, that kind of thing. A character that's nine is seven, two years back. And so you can kind of break things up, but it's rough. That's roughly, roughly the rule of thumb is one year for a game of Thrones, six months for a clash of Kings, about four months, three or four months for a storm of swords that like six, seven, maybe eight months for a dance with dragons. A dance with dragons is a little looser on the time. Um, uh, especially with the last chapters, hard to figure out like what's going on with um, with um, with John, and like how his chapters are lining up with the rest of Westeros. But um, the uh, did you want to do like a do you want to do that, that George R. R. Martin like interview combo? Uh, sure. At a later point when we do uh, the the Fallout stuff. Yeah, what did you what did you want to talk about with uh, with regards to? Um... It's it, because we were we were talking about how uh, Alt Shift X was doing the interview with George. Um, mm. I think I'm pretty sure he posted on his Discord server, and someone in my server is in his as well, and said yeah. that he got his uh, thing with George. And I and I was saying how um, the last YouTubers who interviewed George, what they got they got almost nothing out of him. <laughs> right. Granted, they kept interrupting him, and it was a boring interview, but they got sure. nothing out of him. Besides, what was it you told me that Dark Sister is with Dark Blood Sister? Raven? Like Blood Raven took Dark Sister to the wall. And how long was that? How long was that conversation? Two hours? I think. It was, I mean, at least an hour. I don't know if it was two, but it was at least an hour. The one thing that that pisses me off about any George interview, and this is something you, I know, maybe because you're a George R. R. Martin scholar, maybe you've seen this, mm -hmm. maybe you've noticed it, but in the last four years, any fucking interview George has done. He looks annoyed and bored to be asked about Ice and Fire. And that kind of pisses me off. You know? Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Um, the, the, the last conversation was an hour, 17 minutes. Right. But, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm an asshole here. It, it would be like someone meeting you in person and then they want to talk to you about Ice and Fire. And then you're annoyed. They don't want to ask you about the leftovers. It's like, bro, what do you think we're here for? That's my problem with George. Yeah. Like, because he rolls his eyes and he's like, I remember Penguin House did an interview with him and he goes, and finally, uh, here, uh, someone's asking me, when's Winds of Winter coming out? Well, motherfucker, don't sigh. Like, we're here for ice and fire. Like, why do you think you have that main? <coughs> it's not because of Song of Leah, you know, it's because yeah. of uh, Fat Pink Mast. That ranch with all those horses, you have that because Mirror Swamp. You know, like the fact that you can order Uber Eats every day, you have that because her cunt was the world. Like you have all of this because of Ice and Fire. Don't fucking oh, like get the fuck yeah, out of yeah. here. That, that just annoys me. I mean, I would say that like, well, one, George does a lot of interviews and he gets he asks, he gets asked the same questions over and over again. So he does get bored of those. He tends to, again, become more alive when people ask him something new, but that tends not to be about ice and fire. It tends to be about something else. Like, Hey, tell me about the best place to eat in New Jersey or something. Oh, I haven't talked about that. And then he might, you know, like that he'll like come alive to. Um, so one, like he's been asked a lot, like the same questions about ice and fire. And so he, and he has these prepared responses that I've heard sometimes almost verbatim, uh, the same stuff. Or it's something new and he's being super cagey because he doesn't want to reveal anything or he doesn't have the he doesn't have the answers, you know. Um, so it's like you get kind of those situations. If I'm being fair to the <clears throat> to the the interviewers that we're that we we're talking about a second ago that interviewed him for an hour, like they're very excited. So they're going to cut him off more because they're, they're, you know, but also like George leaves these long pauses and when people like leave long pauses in their conversation, you like naturally want to fill the void. And so you like sure. interject. And so to be, you know, that's why it's like, 
that's why they, yeah, they you know that nice. happens you know you're, you're, you're such a nice man you're so nice. I would, inter- I would interviewing interviewing is a real nice. skill it's it's hard it is and you know you can't just take an you know a, a person off the street like this is why johnny Cart. like you i didn't even understand it when i was young like but you you watch johnny carson and you're like oh i get it like he's getting you know somebody else to talk and it's incredible and it feels like a real flow conversation, um, you know. Um, Did you see Conan O'Brien on Hot Ones? He actually mentioned something specifically you're talking about. Did you see that? No, I didn't. But, I, you know, it, it's something that's probably like comes up. Yeah. No, he was talking about how the worst thing an, uh, uh, someone who's being interviewed can do is look at the camera and say, this is not going well, is it? That fucking destroys the whole like yeah. the feel the interview and the whole conversation because the host can always save it but if the interviewee is like being a dumb fuck then it goes out the window and i'm not i'm not right. trying to rip on old shift x you know what that would be surreal and crazy like getting to talk to the guy whose work i talk about that pays my rent that is surreal mm. so he's a lucky guy um but i feel as though and i'm not saying this because we're friends and i'm not saying this because i love you i feel mm. as though a conversation between you and george would be a bit more interesting because you've read most of george's works i don't i don't know if alt has read george's stuff yeah but at the same time yeah. like <clears throat> when i tried to talk to george about those sorts of things he didn't want to talk about those either so i don't know i mean i don't in general i don't think interviews with george r martin are very valuable <laughs> like I don't um, I agree. I've been saying this forever. I agree. You know, like what is, what is he, he going to tell us? Nothing. He doesn't he doesn't tell new information. He repeats kind of the same things over and over again. He I think he used to be like 20 like 20 25 years ago, he would reveal a lot more, but now he doesn't reveal anything. And you're right, he does kind of act annoyed and bored and um I don't know. You're just uh it, it's it's a surreal experience, and I'm sure like any YouTuber would be lo- any YouTuber that covers Ice and Fire would be lucky to talk to George, even for ten minutes. It, it's like it's like a badge of honor in a sense. So props to all for getting that done. But at the same time, I would love to talk to him if he could actually answer all my questions, like regardless. But he wouldn't. He wouldn't answer anything would. I would want to know, he and would. probably because he's saving it for the books or because he doesn't know. You're right. right. So, so I mean, it's. It's, it's, you're put <clears throat> you're putting yourself in like a really uncomfortable situation where like you're, you're, you're asking a guy information that he doesn't want to tell you, <laughs> you know, like, or you can ask him about stuff you don't give a shit about. Those are your options. Option one, Tra- to ask him about something right you don't care the- about. Option two, ask him something you do care about that he's not going to fucking answer and he's going to get kind of annoyed with you about it. Yeah. Pretty much. Trey's yelling at the screen right now. Ask him about the Harangan mines. Ask him. What do they look like? I think he's been asked that before, right? Uh, he was asked it a long time ago. But you're right that if there's... Fine. You know what? I'm going to fucking send send a fucking message to Alt-Shift. I don't fucking know. ask. Hit up Glytus. <laughs> Glytus is your only contact to Alt-Shift. Fair enough. Um, I mean, doesn't, doesn't, well, I mean, alt shift is on, is on Twitter, right? Uh, I have no idea. I don't know anything about the guy other than he exists. And he's from like Zimbabwe or something. I don't know. I don't know anything about him. (laughs) He's from, he's, he's from the land down under. We all know this. Madagascar. Interesting. That's true. (laughs) Um, all right, all right, all right. This is what I'm fucking gonna do right now. Okay, all right. This uh-huh. is this is fun. This is fun shit. This is this is why you've all stayed up to to for tw- till twelve thirty. Okay, we're doing this shit. Okay. Um. Okay. So, what do I tweet here? Just message Gladys privately. No, no. I'm fucking making it. I'm fucking what making it a big fucking deal. I'm not, I'm not, no. <laughs> okay. Why? Because we're having alt shift ask, ask, ask him what the fucking harangue and mines look like. That's what we're fucking going to do. 
That's an answer that he should be able to fucking answer. That doesn't, that uh. doesn't like affect ice and fire. It doesn't like, and it's something we've like, he's at the end of his fucking life. Okay. He's going to die. He's never going to fucking write another thousand Easy. worlds story. We could at least have him fucking tell us what the fucking harangan mines look like. Right? You can at least be that, right? So this is what I'm going to do. Do, what, do. How do I get... Um, Bro, I don't know this fucking dude's a tag. I, I, don't, I don't know anything about him. Then, then fine. Then, then I'm putting... Um, what, what? Not petition, but like... Campaign to have... Alt shift. Ask. George R. Martin. What do the harangan mines look like? Okay. <clears throat> we need this answered. It's about time. What like, uh, what do we say for? What do you say like repost? What what what's the thing? what's the lingo on Twitter? I don't know. Fucking fuck fuck you guys! <laughs> why why are you so why are you so technologically illiterate? <laughs> what do you mean me? Okay, I, I know I'll this stuff. At Alt Shift X. You didn't add him though. I'm I'm adding him now. Oh, okay. Okay. And then I'm going to at Trey the Explainer. <laughs> I'm adding. You must do. I'm adding Dragon Demands. Uh oh, now you've done it. Is Dragon Demands Dragon Demands? What 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 happened? He, he's a a Dragon Demands. Oh, yeah, there he is. A, it's Glytus is what not uh, not Glytus. Here it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why um, me? <laughs> what's that? Why, why not? I'm, so you can fucking forward it. We're having this. Uh, okay, okay. Anything else I should put in there besides like campaign to have Alt Shift X ask George R. Martin what do the Harangan mines look like? We need we need this answered once and for all. It, It's about it's about goddamn time. Rankin mines. <laughs> <clears throat> so Carmine control in the post. I won't. Um. Anybody? Anybody else? Anybody else? Who else? Who else is rich? I'm fucking putting wow. um. Um. Quinn. Quinn's ideas. Why? <laughs> Doesn't he? Does, 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 well, I need. I, I'm fucking having this. <laughs> like, Stephen King. Stephen King. Fuck it. Why not? Right. <sighs> no, this is enough. I don't know. This is fucking happening. Okay. I'm making fetch happen. Okay. Post. Uh oh. What's that? Yeah, I got the notification. I should post a picture of that blonde with the, that cute blonde woman with the, the boner. No, I won't do that. Don't worry, I got you. It's a serious, it's a serious thing. I won't post anything stupid. Right, but this is. I mean, by the way, you have you have no idea how excited you made Dragon Demands to be tagged. <laughs> You have no idea how you made it. I'm just saying this campaign can fucking happen. Like, like, because this is exactly what we're talking about. George is gonna is going to answer nothing related to a song of ice and fire. He's going to give us zero information on a song of ice and fire, and any other questions are going to be fucking useless. I don't care about his fucking turtles from his goddamn penny shop when he was fucking nine years old. 
Okay. I don't care about like froggy uh, on like the children's shows that he watched. Like, like do not care. Do not care. We can at least find out what the fucking harangue and minds look like. It's like the perfect fucking question. Now that I'm thinking about it. Right. It's the only thing he can actually answer that anyone will care about. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. What do the fucking harangue and minds look like? Preston, Preston, whatever you do, do not go back to... Okay, never mind. You got off the Twitter thing. Never mind. Because do not share your screen again, but go go back to that... I didn't do anything. I swear that's not me on alt accounts. What? I Just go back to that post, re I am. like refresh, and look at your comments. I did not do that. I just want to make that clear. Oh, you're talking about the nudes in profile? Yeah, I did. I don't. I that that is crazy how those bots did that so fast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Although that redhead, though, I mean, <laughs> but no, sir, I wasn't me. It's... Well, I, I mean, I'm sure these bots are everywhere, man. What should I, uh, can I, what, would I just block them? What is that? Hide reply? Mm -hmm. Hide. I don't know. Does that hide everything? Fucking, I, we don't know how to do any of this shit. Block Abby. Block Eliza. Jeez. That's it. Vulcran in bio? Huh? What's that? Gladys, Gladys responded. It's the only, it's the only question that is worth Vulcran in bio. I don't know what that means. Or, I mean, does he think that, oh, maybe he thinks that the, the Harangan mines look like the Vulcran? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, I got to get to bed. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Did I, did I answer all the fucking super chats? I don't know. I posted but, a comment to, like, make it go far that way because, like, the more comments help. Yeah. That comment you can see. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <sighs>